Hello, hello. We are back. Excited for this rivalry game, Round Valley, St. John's. This is Ethan Holiday joined with me by Mr. Dan Moo. Hello, everybody. Hey, we got a great night of football ahead of us tonight. What a way to start the season. I cannot believe we are starting the season week one, rivalry, rivalry week, <laughs> rivalry week uh, with St. John's. What a way to start the 2020 season, right? I'm so excited I can barely talk. I don't uh, even blame you. I, I'm stumbling all over myself because I'm just pumped. I'm just pumped. This is always a big game for these two communities. Uh, unbelievable. One of the oldest rivalries in the state. Somebody said the second oldest. I don't believe that. I believe we're the oldest. Seeing how Apache County was one of the first counties in the Arizona Territory. A little trivia for you. So I'm pumped. I'm stoked. This is always a good game. It's going to be physical. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm so excited. We've got so much awesomeness packed into one night. It's going to be hard to cover it all, but we're going to try. We'd just like to give a quick shout-out to our pregame sponsor, Pioneer Title Agency. Awesome people right here in Round Valley. Super helpful. If you need anything, uh, any of their services, go to them. They're always doing their best to help improve this community. We are very, very grateful for, to them for their uh, participation in tonight. Uh, also, we're being joined by the uh, Loft Legacy Teen Center in St. John's. They are doing all the camera work. This is a partnership uh, between uh, the Loft Legacy Teen Center and Let's Go Elks. And uh, we're super excited about being able to work with them. It gives us an opportunity to uh, to help teach uh, youth about video production, journalism, writing, all kinds of awesome stuff. Couldn't be more proud to be uh, joined by them here today. Uh, their producer, we've got Victor Chavez. He's going to be one running all the video, taking control of all the shots. Uh, we've got uh, his helper, J.B. Uh, Engler. He's going to be down walking on the sidelines. He's got a sideline camera tonight. And then we've got four um, team camera operators from the loft. And they are Maisie Kellogg, Joe Holden, Caden Castleberry, and Dakota Albertson. Can't thank them enough for being here tonight. And, I mean, look at these cameras. Look at this quality. Oh, I tell it's you. a beautiful stream. Yeah, it is. It is. I'm super excited about it tonight because this is just going to set the tone for the rest of the season. Oh, I'm so excited. Tonight we work out the bugs. Next week is Stafford. Oh, this is going to be great. Hey, I've got an announcement from the Round Valley Student Council, if I can. Go for it. Uh, so the Round Valley Student Council has a spirit couch in the student section sponsored by the student council. Tickets will be available every home game. The winner gets to choose three friends and have the best seat in the house and $25 free in concessions. This week's winner is Kimball Boone. Congratulations, Kimball. Uh, hope you enjoy the couch. It is an awesome couch, by the way. Is I helped the girls pick it up the other night. Yeah, it's huge. It's one of those 70s style big plush jobs where you can just stretch out for days. I can't think of a better way to sit down and watch the game. You are right there, front row, in the student section, where it could not get more rowdy. Uh, just an awesome opportunity and a little bit of a fundraiser for student council. So support your uh, Round Valley Student Council and uh, try to get yourself a seat at the Spirit Couch. All right. I am reading your comments. The audio seems a little underwater. Is that a little better for you guys? All right. How about now? Are we coming through better now? Sounds a little better on my end. Well, I've got my... Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe that's a little hot. Sorry about that, everybody. All right. Okay, so tonight... Uh, the rosters for the teams are as follows. Uh, for St. John's, for St. John's Redskins, we got Dion Perry, quarterback and uh, wide receiver. Gage Heap, wide receiver, defensive back. 
Let's see, uh, number four, JT Richardson, wide receiver, defensive back. Number six, Alex Pettit, wide receiver, defensive back. Number seven, Asher Raven, wide receiver, defensive back. Number nine, James Thomas, quarterback and defensive back. Number 11, Michael Gibson, wide receiver and defensive back. Uh, number 15, Joseph Bushman, running back and linebacker. Number 19, Chase Heat, wide receiver and defensive back. Number 20, Jordan Mannery, tight end, defensive line. 22, Slade Nevin, tight end, defensive end. Number 28, Ira Tolis, running back and defensive back. 32, Gage Tricky, defensive back and kicker. 34, Jason Spencer, linebacker and defensive line. Number 40, Afton Cox, running back and defensive end. Number 50, Nick Patterson, offensive line, defensive line. Number 53, Jacob Skousen, offensive line, defensive line. Carl Bing. Number 55, Carl Bigman, offensive line, defensive line. Uh, number 60, Jay Wall, offensive line, defensive line. 65, Henry Thompson, offensive line, defensive line. 67, Chase Gray, offensive line, defensive line. 69, Anthony Diamond, offensive line, defensive line. A lot of linemen in St. John's. Number 70, Corne Cornelio Curiz, offensive line, defensive line. So sorry about Butch and her in that. Number 75, Ethan Owens, offensive line, defensive line. 77, Riley Green, offensive line, defensive line. Number 88, Gavin Harris, offensive line, defensive line. Thank that you. is your St. John's roster. Thank you for that. Mr. Moot? All right, I've been playing with the auto a little bit. Is it sounding any better to you guys? Indeed, sorry about that. National Anthem snuck up on us while we were <laughs> adjusting audio. All right, so now for your Round Valley Elks, number one, South Wilbank, running back, defensive back, number two, Owen Young, number three, Kyron Clark, number four, Riley Hamlin, number five, Javon Ortiz, number six, Gage Slade, number eight, Cade Hogle, number 12, Tracy Merrill, number 22, Cooper Howard, 24, Rowdy Rivera, 28, KC Mortensen, number 30, Stockton Brown, number 42, Armando Garcia, number 56, Jaden Pancake Cisco, number 58, Kyler Rominger, number 60, Cutter Williams, number 62, Gannon Earhart, number 66, Jamison Stover, 68, Caden Sloan, 75, Brandon Strickland, 77, Keanu Clark, 85, Morgan Rona, number 88, Mal Makai Funaki. There you go. All right, we got a minute and 42 before kickoff. Captains are heading out to the center of the field. Captain for Round Valley is Riley Hamlin. Captain for St. John's is number 50, Nick Patterson. Right now they're coming together. Referees explaining some COVID protocol, which seems a little redundant at this point, but that's all right. Um, I'm sure they're doing a little pregame. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know if you're aware of this, but this is one of the few places within the continental United States where we are actually doing live football at the high school level. Uh, this is a big game for us. It's a big game for St. John's, but not only that, but it's a big step towards normality. Referee's going over the corner toss. There's the flip. Looks like Round Valley won the toss and has chosen to receive. Uh, we've got a pretty stiff breeze. It looks like St. John's is electing to defend the south end zone. So Round Valley will be receiving from the north. St. John's will be kicking from the south. Ladies and gentlemen, in 20 seconds, we're going to start playing some football. Riley is met by his team out on the 50-yard line out towards the Round Valley side on the hash. They are all grouped together. I'm sure they're having a, a little bit of a chat. Left on your FM dial. So St. John's is kicking from the far side hash. Round Valley is now set up at the 50, ready to receive. We've just gotten the ready for play. And the kick. It's a high, deep kick fielded by Seth at the one yard line. He brings it out to the 10, he's out to the 20. There he is, he's crossing the 30. Brought down at the 38 yard line on the Round Valley side. He was, he was one, one person away from breaking that and taking it to the house. I thought he was going to go all the way. Thank you guys for putting up with uh, the uh, audio issue. I think we got it figured out, so here we go. I can breathe easy once again. I can't believe sports are actually happening. Oh, I, this, you have no idea what this means to me right now. Okay, first down for Round Valley. At the 39 is the spot. Here's the snap. Seth goes around. And he's out to the. He's out to the 43. Oh, looks like a decent gain. What four, five yards? Yep, uh, four yards on that. Four yards on that run. I'm thinking a little bit of a trap on the end there, and he just. He found a seam on the outside and exploited it. You know, and there's nothing wrong with picking it up four and five yards at a time. That's a good way to control the clock, which seems to be Coach Bell's game plan most of the time. Uh, shotgun formation. Cisco with the snap. Hand off to Foreman. He finds a crease on the outside, and he fights his way out to the 50-yard line. All right, we got two different spots. Let's see which one they go with here. This should be a first down if it's, it is, it's a, it should be a first down. And they're moving the chains. First and 10 Round Valley, just over the 49 yard line. Like you said, nothing wrong with getting it, four or five yards at a time. Nothing at all. Shotgun formation, Cisco with the snap. Rolling out, left side. Owens rolling out, picks up uh, Riley, or no, Jovan Ortiz who gets out to the 38 and goes out of bounds on the St. John sideline. Yeah, I like that play. Well executed, well designed. You know, it's nice to see it's nice to see Owen roll out like that and use some quickness. You know, everybody was worried after he broke his leg last year how he would come back as a player and it is good to see him on the field uh giving it what he's got. Shotgun formation. Cisco with the snap. Oh, and looking. Oh, good penetration. Number 53 from St. John's. That's Jacob Skousen. Jacob Skousen reading the offside. Uh, 
Skousen Blitzen on the uh, weak side picks up Owen. Lost of about, what, caught four? I'd call that four. All right, second down and long. You going in the air with this, Muth? Are you going to? No, I'd keep it on the ground. Uh, I think I would attack the wide side of the field, though. Um, Skousen's a little bit much on that side. They need to work some issues out over there. Oh, looks like I'm wrong. There's Owen airing it out. Going to Riley Hamblin, taking it all the way down to it looks like the 11-yard line, airing it out. He goes out of bounds on, on the 11-yard line on Round Valley side. Oh, just missed it on the replay. Unreal. Here I am saying pound it out, and what do they do? <laughs> they go to the air, but hey, it works. Uh, correction, that actually went out of bounds on the 12. Nice, good chunk of yardage there. Hey, hats off to the offensive line for giving him the time to get that play off. Shotgun formation. Young gives it to uh, gives it to KC Mortensen. He stumbles it out for a yard or two. Looks like the middle of uh, looks like the middle of the St. John's defense really tightened the belt right there. Look, look with uh, KC like he's just short enough that maybe he might just disappear behind all those linemen. <laughs> yeah. Is that maybe the hope? I think so. <laughs> if he can stay behind Pancake, he could probably get a couple more yards. Nothing fancy. Just get on, just get on Cisco and ride him down the field. Shotgun formation. Cisco with the snap. Owen looking, little, he, quick little pass out to Seth. He cuts the corner, and he is out of bounds at the two-yard line. Reaches for the pylon and just misses it. Yeah, I think he went right out just before. He did. He stepped out of bounds on the two-yard line and <laughs> reached for the pylon and just missed it. Great effort by Seth Wilbank on that. Oh, so we're actually at the one-and-a-half-yard line. So let's see if Round Valley decides to go with the heavy set and just punch it right in the middle. It looks like that's what they're opt opting for. Well, they're in a tight formation. Put a man in motion. There goes Seth Wilbank. Oh, he stopped at the line of scrimmage. I can't see who was the first Redskin in on that tackle. Uh, was that 53 or 22? 22 was in on that. That would be Slade ne Nevin. Slade Nevin. Well done. Stopped that one short. Stopped it before it really even got going. You know, this this is really difficult field position for a defense. This is where you tell your guys bend, but don't break. And it, and it's tough. I mean, that is the shortest field you could possibly get right there. Yep. Young under center. Here's the snap. He rolls out. He's looking for a pass. He's got a man open. He keeps it. And he's down back to the line of scrimmage. Not sure sure what happened on that he had he had Jovan Ortiz and Riley Hamlin both open it looked like he was hoping to get a block from what was that number five uh, that would have been Jovan from Jovan and just a little miscommunication and instead it got wrapped up he was hoping to carry it in himself looked like to me so now we are third and goal from the one yard line. Oh, look at this camera angle right on the line. And we've got uh, Owen Young under center. Cisco with the snap. St. John's coming hard. Owen Young Ooh. is dropped at the nine yard line. Let's see where they mark it. Yep, they're gonna mark him all the way back. St. John's coming with a heavy blitz. Oh, they actually spot it. What is that, the seven? Looks uh, like they've yes. spotted it to seven. Yeah. St. John's loading up with eight in the box and they just brought everybody. So now we got a field goal attempt. Five. 
by 71. I, we don't have I don't him have on the I don't either. And it's a little Ooh. blooper, but it's good. It went through. It still counts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure they would have rather had six or seven, but it looks like Round Valley had to settle for three. I'm going to have to give that a – I'm going to have to call that a decent to a good defensive stand by St. John's for not giving up the touchdown. I think it was a great defensive stand. I mean, they, they had four tries from a yard and a half, and they didn't. They came away with three. So, well done, Redskins. You know, yep. you don't have to try quite so hard next time, but I understand that you want to. They are definitely <laughs> going to have a conversation at halftime with the guards in the center about picking up that inside blitz. They have yep. got to do something about that because St. John's has got speed and size. So if Round Valley is going to be successful in their ground game, they are going to have to pick up that blitz. So Round Valley will be kicking from the north side on the 40. St. John's will be receiving. This will be interesting to see how St. John's offense comes back and answers. So we got St. John's lining up to receive. Number 71 for Round Valley's kicking. If somebody can text me that young man's name or send us send it to us on the feed, that would be great because we have no idea who he is. And there he is. Tell us is He's trying to evade blockers. Oh, oh. That, they got him at the 15. They mark progress. He will be at the 14, maybe the 13-yard line. Uh, it looks like 14. It looks like they're going to mark him. Tullus uh, bringing it out to the 14-yard line. Only uh, broke three tackles before he finally got mobbed. Well, you know, it, when he was a sophomore, he actually played for Round Valley before moving to St. John's. I, You know, a little fun fact for the audience out there. Uh, but Tullus has always been a kind of a salty runner anyway, so we'll see what he's got tonight. All right, looking at the Redskins' first possession. Let's see what they got. Round Valley in a four-man front on defense. It's a handoff to Tullus, and they stop him right at the line of scrimmage. He got nothing. Uh, let's see, that would be Kyron Clark in on the tackle. Helped out by... Looks like Cade Hogel. St. John's coming out in a shotgun formation. Round Valley putting five on the line. There we are. No. Oh, overthrown by... About is it, eight yards. Yep, 22 is the intended target. That is uh, Slade Nevin. That throw by James Thomas, the uh, quarterback for the Redskins. I'm sure we will see those two later. Oh, I believe it. Well, they're still looking to find their groove. Third and long, this is more than likely a passing situation. Well, you know, this is a series where you can expect them to experiment a little bit, test the defense and see what the defense has got. Take a couple pokes at the DBs. There's it out again. No. Oh. oh. Number 19 was the intended receiver. I want to look at that again because I am not sold on this flag. Ah, uh, yeah, he was that was a play on the ball. I don't. I didn't see a push off there. I we'll have to see what the ref says, but. Uh, that's going to be pass interference on Ortiz. That's that's definitely P.I. He wasn't even close to the ball. He's over the back, unfortunately. Yeah, I think he earned that one. Okay, so that one's going to hurt. So instead of third and seven, we now get a 15-yard penalty and a first down. So now that brings it out to the St. John's 30-yard line. And we, we've we got some folks thinking that eh, they might not agree with that call. 
Uh, Round Valley in a four-man front. There's the snap. Hands off to Tullis. Tullis is hit in the backfield in a, for a loss of two. How cool is this having the uh, the opposing team on the opposite sideline? This is something I've never seen before in the Dome. You know, I like it. I like I like the separation of the fans. It keeps it from getting chippy, uh, especially with the parents. I like it. Kind of reminds me of the old days. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't know what the old days are like, but. Okay, so we got James Thomas in a shotgun formation. Man in motion. Hands out, hands out off to Slade Nevin. And uh, he got some of the loss back. I think he got maybe a yard. Yeah, that was early penetration by our man Pancake there. Yeah. Jaden really fighting the battle up front. So we're now third down and 11. We got James Thomas in the shotgun again. Four man front for Round Valley. Here's the snap. We got a strong rush. Looks like a screen pass to Tullis. Tullis hesitates and he's brought down at the 20, looks like the 27, 28 again. Oh, they had that set up too. They had that screen set up, but Round Valley did not bite. So now they've got fourth and 11. I would look for a punt, but I wouldn't put anything past Coach Morgan. He might decide to air it out, but he generally tends to be conservative. Uh, looks like we're possibly attempting to put a punt formation together. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Is that number 50? We only have 10 Redskins on the field at the moment. Looks like Nick Patterson is back to kick. All right. We've got 11 now. Yeah, we've got a late entry. Afton Cox, welcome to the party. All right. Mr. Patterson is back. He gets the kick away. Uh, let's see. It's... It's going to go dead at, what, the 38 and a half, 39? Yep. yep. All right, so Round Valley is going to start their second offensive series from the 39-yard line on the far side hash. So let's see if they can punch it in this time and not get inside the red zone and and, uh, and fizzle out. Fizzle out or have the miscues. Yeah. It's easy to armchair quarterback. We have to remember this is both teams' first game. This Aside, is also true. <laughs> so I would expect some miscues, nope. maybe some maybe some tension, some anxiety, excitement playing into this. Let's see how they settle in. We got 304 left on the clock in the first quarter. Young is back in shotgun. Cisco with the snap with the keeper. He's passing it out. Oh. It looks like Rowdy Rivera was the intended receiver and he came up short. Uh, a little too much air under that one, to yeah. Rowdy. So we got second down. Uh, Ruben and Olivia Aranda, please thank the loft and their amazing cameras for the video quality of this stream. I'm loving it too. I tell you, those guys are bringing us some great footage. Yes. Th this is this is beyond. I mean, that, on. did you see that goal line footage? That was awesome. Sideline footage. Yeah, I hope to see it again. So Young back in shotgun. Oh, there goes Wilbank. He broke through the line. He's out to the 40, 35. Takes it down to the 34. He's hit out of bounds on the St. John's 34-yard line. Found a crease on the outside and hit the gas. Well done. Oh, I tell you, Seth Wilbank has got some breakaway speed. Uh, gets around the corner like that. That's scary for a defense. That's where you tell your ends and your corners you've got to contain. Outside linebacker, ends, corners, you've got to watch that and keep him between the tackles. Going back, 
There's one out looking for Jovan Ortiz. Ooh. Thrown a little bit short. Is that a late hit on the quarterback? Yes, it was. It looks like we've 50. got roughing the passer. Uh, it's uh, Nick Patterson, St. John's. Yeah. Looks like uh, ball was long gone when he uh, got a little rowdy. And, you know, this is football. Yep. That is going to happen every now and then. You can't necessarily blame these kids for playing – with a little bit of excitement. Not, you know, despite the fact that this is ri uh, rivalry week, I mean, these guys these guys are going to play excited whether they're rivals or not. So, eh, you yeah. know, I'm... Now, it's unfortunate that St. John's committing that penalty basically moves us all the way up to the 19-yard line. That does not help their cause at all. No. And I got to tell you, playing uh, defensive line in high school, you see the quarterback, you just you get that close. Sometimes you think, man, might as well just finish the job. Well, sure, you're sending a message there. Oh, oh. the pass is picked off. Number 15, yep. Joseph Bushman. So we had Owen Young rolling out to the right, looking for, I believe, Jovan Ortiz. In the flat and didn't see the linebacker. And the linebacker stepped up. was that up. the safety? That was a safety that walked up on him, I think. I believe you're right. I think that was the safety. Anyway, defensive back steps up, steps in front of the ball. Yeah, awesome break on the ball. Well done, Redskins. So now we've got St. John's first and 10 on their own 25-yard line. Two minutes, 42 seconds left in this quarter. James Thomas under center. Here we go, right up the middle. Uh, hand off to Joseph Bushman. Wow, from interception to the first rushing yards. Yeah, he's like had a that. big he's had a big night, and he's we've only really seen him for about a minute and a half now. <laughs> uh, St. John's up to the 29-yard line. Second and six. Thomas going back in, uh, oh no, Thomas is under center. Uh, the offset eye. Here we go. Ivor Tullis to the outside. He's got a lead block. Oh. Uh, two, maybe three yards on that run. He had a lead block, but then Round Valley's defense just kind of collapsed in around it, behind it, and shut that down. So now St. John's out to their own 32. Uh, they're going to need three yards to uh, get the first down, three yards or more. So we'll see how they do. Really impressed with the defensive battle so far in this first quarter. Yeah. Both teams playing hard. Liking what I'm seeing. Very competitive. Round Valley with a five-man defensive front. Thomas under center. He rolls out after... He's gonna keep he gets it. around Clark. He's got the first down. Makes it out across the 45-yard line. Brought down by Seth Wiltbank. Here he is rolling out. Gets around the D end. Didn't get that outside seal and foot race. Looks like, was that number seven got him? I think it was one, wasn't it? Was it, was it one? Was it? I'm looking at the replay now. Yeah, that was Seth Wilbank. Yeah, so now St. John's has got uh, first and 10 on Round Valley's 49, no, 44 yard line. First and 10 on Round Valley's 44. Round Valley with a, uh, they're making a defensive shift. Looks like they're going down in a five man front. Thomas is under center. Two in the backfield. Looks like he's rolling out. Oh, he got maybe one or two yards. Let's see who the carrier was. That was Tullus on the carry. He made it back out to the line of scrimmage. No gain. Yeah, they're liking Sin and Tullus right up the middle, and he's a hard runner. Maybe they're hoping to wear this defense out, and that'll start opening up that, that middle lane later on in the game. Because he is a hard runner, you can tell. Another defensive shift to the strong side. We got Thomas under center. He's looking. 
Handed it to Deion Perry. Deion Perry's in the backfield. Oh, hit for a big loss. He rolls out to the St. John sideline and just gets covered up. That looks like, uh, what, three-yard loss on that play? That uh, looks like it to me. So we got third and 13 at the end of the first quarter. Uh, looks like St. John's will be third and 13 from uh, the Round Valley 47-yard line. Yes, and I didn't get a chance to shout out earlier, but we wanted to thank uh, Woodland Building Center for being our first quarter sponsor. As we move on to our second quarter, Hamblin Law Offense joining us as our second quarter sponsor. I don't know if you guys can see it on the, on the footage or not, but it is so heartwarming to see all of the fans in the stands. Some social distance, some not but everybody just sitting down on a Friday night enjoying a high school football game. This is the first real sense of normalcy I have felt in a while. But, I mean, don't you think so? I mean, this just feels right. It definitely feels good. I'm super stoked to be here. You can see uh, Steven's down there. He's excited. Been taking stats for us. We'll take a look at those here in a minute. Yep. Wes and Steven will be joining us at halftime. I mean, it's just, I don't, I don't know. I'm speechless. I, there's a lot I could say, but it'd probably be better served keeping my mouth shut. <laughs> I, I don't want to be too opinionated. Ah, that's all right. I'll dump your microphone if it gets weird. <laughs> hey, thanks for that. Keep me out of trouble. You're welcome. I got your back, buddy. All right, so we're flipping the field. So now we have St. John's going in towards the south. Round Valley facing north. And we are about ready. We got third and 13. And we got Coach Morgan with timeout. All right. Not really sure why you would take a timeout when you already had a minute between the quarters. But hey, you know, if you feel like you need to take a minute and discuss something, by all means, Coach. Have at it. I mean, you got to use them sometime. Mm, I have a feeling he's going to want that one back. So this now, quarter. if I've been told correctly, I would like to fact check this with somebody. I think Coach Morgan tonight is playing for the most winningest coach in Arizona history, high his, school. So if I'm understanding it correctly, his next victory, be it tonight or next week or whenever it happens, makes him officially the winningest coach in Arizona scholastic football history. So as a Round Valley guy, I'm kind of hoping it's not tonight, but I wish all the best for Coach Morgan. It's a well-deserved honor. You know, if it didn't happen tonight, it would be a bummer because the same thing happened for his 300th win. It came here, and he got denied, had to wait another week. So, yeah. Oh, pass to the left side to uh, Joseph Bushman. He takes it all the way down to the, what, 38? Yep. Down to Round Valley's 38. He had the room. I thought he might break loose, but not quite enough. Correct me if I'm wrong, but so far tonight, uh, this uh, Joseph Bushman is – Basically, the Lions share their offensive production, if I'm not wrong. Uh, well, that they had that big run from number nine, their quarterback, James Thomas, when he broke out of the pocket. Oh, that's true. Yep. But, uh, yeah, getting great production out of uh, Bushman and Thomas so far. I look for Tullis to have a good second half, if not a better end of the second quarter. At some point, he will start to break out in this game. Yeah, with his running style – that's that wears on defenses, you know. Okay, Thomas rolling out, and he oh, intended the receiver was Gage Heap, and Gage just could not get there. Uh, Thomas was on the run. I mean, he was wide open. Uh, was that Rowdy was covering him? Yeah, Rowdy, Rowdy was covering him. He tripped and fell, and so he got back up, but he was still had at least two, two and a half, three yards of separation. Yeah, Rivera's going to have to tighten that up. I'm sure Coach Morgan's looking at that saying, we will try that again. Yes. All right, so that's a turnover on down. Round Valley taking it back over on their own 38, 39, 38. 
Uh, they're on their own 38. And we oh. got a flag. Oh, we got too many men. Illegal substitution on St. John's. They broke. It looks like, uh, yeah, illegal yeah. substitution. So yeah. there's two ways that can go. If the ball snapped and you have 12 on the field, then it's illegal participation. So they try to flag it before the ball snaps so that it's only an illegal substitution. That way it's a five-yard penalty and not a 15. Just a little trivia for you from an ex-official. Is that from when the offense breaks the huddle is when they can call that? No, defense. Defense breaks either, the huddle. Either. Okay. Basically, they should enforce that as soon as they see it. There we go. We got Seth. Seth Wilbank coming around. He's got a crease. He's going to the sideline. He takes it all the way down to the St. John's 32-yard line. Oh, let's take another look at this. Uh, he Bouncing just, out to the outside. Yeah, that was a direct snap to Wilbank, and he just took off with it, trying to catch the defense on their heels, and it looks like that worked because he just went outside, and he broke outside before the defensive end could even react. All right, so Elks, fresh set of downs on St. John's 32-yard line. Seth Wiltbank in shotgun. Uh, officials timeout. Jovan's got a uniform malfunction. The officials helping him out with there. So this is a different look from Round Valley. Seth Wiltbank at quarterback. Yes. An empty backfield. Ortiz in motion. There's Seth. He hands off to Ortiz. Ortiz has a crease. He's got one man to beat to the outside. He doesn't beat him and gets driven out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Looks like a loss of three on that play. Uh, the St. John's defender, James Thomas. James Thomas, foot for foot with him, rode him right out of bounds. So Round Valley trying to use a little quickness. And... Uh, James Thomas was right there with him. Just couldn't quite make it around that corner. If he did, he had a lot of open field in front of him. Oh, could you imagine what he if he could have just jump stopped and then spun? Yeah, I'm quite sure he would love to have that one back. As it is, looking at second and about 14. Will Bank back. We got Rivera in motion. It's a keeper. Will Bank's got it, but he's, Patterson's all over him. Drags him back for another five-yard loss. So now we've got Round Valley back on their own 41. Yeah, looking at no, third. they're on St. John's 41. Sorry, they're on St. John's 41, third and 20. Yeah. It's right at 20, 19 or 20. It's Yeah, 19. Whatever it is, it's double sticks. They got a long way to go. Patterson with a big pickup on that. Snaps low. Young throws. To our new tight end. That gets him back to the original. Uh, Ma yeah, Makai Funaki getting it back to the line of the scrimmage. I oh, actually gained it too. So now we're at St. John's 30-yard uh, line. Looking at a fourth and eight. Uh, I anticipate him, them going for it. I don't know if we've got the, the leg strength to uh, to make this one happen. So at least based on the last kick I saw. Well, let's see what happens. Timeout, Round Valley. Yeah. Probably not a bad timeout. Kind of a rough series. Time to settle everybody down. I think that's a good timeout right there. Kind of get everybody focused up pointed in the right direction, I think we'll be all right. And if I'm the St. John's coach, I'm just telling him, look, you guys just keep on doing what you're doing. Indeed. Because it is working at this point. I'd like to give a shout out a couple of sponsors while we're waiting here. Bakers by the dozen. You want to order some homemade, fresh, delicious baked goods. They will deliver them to your door or to the door of a friend. Great gift idea. Mention this ad. You're going to get 25% off. You find them on Facebook at Bakers by the Dozen, 
Coming out of timeout. Can you hear me all right? Check, check. Yeah, I'm hearing you. Okay. All right, coming out of timeout, we've got uh, Young back at quarterback. He's in his shotgun. He's got Seth Wiltbank back there with him. There's the snap. He's looking to pass. He's airing it out downfield. Wide open. Oh, thrown by about a yard. Oh, Makai, it was right off of Makai's fingertips. Oh, Makai Funaki. Oh, he breaks. He's a foot taller than that corner and just overthrown. Oh, oh, that's one you want to have back. Yep. A little too much air under that one. St. John's going to take over from their own 29. Or I guess it's right on the 30. Yeah, it's right on the 30 now. It's almost like I have a bunch of computer monitors in my way. <laughs> we'll just watch it on TV. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so is that silly that instead of watching this beautiful 4K picture, I'm trying to peek over the monitors to the live event? Uh, looks like we've got an official's timeout, some adjustment. Oh, the back, the back judge needed to flip sides. A little confusion there by the officials. Now we got everybody lined up. We're blown ready for play. We've got uh, James Thomas back in shotgun. There it is. He hands off to Tullis. Tullis gets hit in the backfield. Uh, no, he brings it out to the line of scrimmage, but. Yeah. Keanu Clark on that tackle. A uh, gain of what, one? Yeah, about a yard. Yeah. So he did get a positive. He did go into positive yardage on that. But Keanu just read that play, fought off his block, and got there. Got about uh, 8.50 left on the clock here in the second half. Clock running, Thomas and shotgun. Here's a snap, Tullis fakes to Tullis. Oh, he tries to, he tries to bounce outside and gets buried in the backfield for a loss of five. Uh, loss of four. So... Round Valley. Clark on that sack. I don't know what Round Valley's stunt was on that defense, but they stunted right into that play. Hey, sometimes you just get lucky. Looks like the student section needs to get a little more rowdy. I don't know what's going on down it there. It does seem a little quiet. Everyone's being so polite in this game. Four man front. Thomas back. Shotgun. He airs it out. He's looking for, oh, in and out of the hands of, uh, where is he? Case Heap. He was in triple, was it triple double coverage? coverage. Yeah, double, yep. So you had Brandon Strickland and Makai Funaki putting pressure on James Thomas. He airs it out into uh, coverage to Heap, and Heap just could not come down with the ball. I mean, out of all three of them standing there, I thought somebody was going to catch it. Well, to be honest, I'm glad nobody caught it. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. All right, so we got Patterson back to punt. Kicks is a, Ooh, kick is a away. Kick. It's a hanger. There it is. It received on the 32. He's up in the middle. He's still on his feet. Oh, excellent return. At Riley Hamblin bringing it out to the – yeah, he brings that out to the 42 after receiving it back on the 30. But that was a hanging punt. Yes. Gave St. John's all kinds of time to get down there on top of him. Yes, that was a very good-looking punt. And Riley finding a crease in the middle and exploiting it for about 12 yards. So, so far, we have got us a football game here in the Dome tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Neither team neither team is, has clearly established themselves as the dominant team. Yeah, it's, it's crazy to think that uh, it's still just a three-point game. Owen with the handoff. Okay. Going to the right side, it's Cade Hogle. I'm not Hogle. sure who. There's a little action right before it started. 
And, it, ooh, it looked like it might have been an encroachment, so that might have been a free play. Uh, I, don't, I, I think I would decline it and take the uh, eight yards personally, but. Nope, procedure no. on us. Hmm. Looks like we jumped. No, I was looking the replay. I didn't see it, but I may, probably wasn't looking at the right player. Uh, I didn't see movement. I didn't either. The kid on the Mackay side of the ball was the one who moved early. Huh. I don't mm, I don't know. Those guys have got those guys have got the best view. We're just gonna have to defer to them. I mean after all they are game administration, so we got Owen Young back in shotgun. St. John's with the five-man front. Looks like their backers are up tight in the blitz. Blitz is picked up. But Seth is picked up hard in the backfield. Uh, looks like he's got a loss of maybe two. Uh, St. John's was just set up for a blitz. Progress is probably going to take him out. Uh, let's see. for a, Yeah, a loss of two, so that puts him on the 36-yard line. Yeah, Slade Nevin in there for the uh, tackle for St. John's. You know, St. John's' defense is salty. They, Round Valley's going to have to make some adjustments at halftime and figure out what they need to do up front. Yeah, there's a lot of penetration. Defensive happening. shift. We got Patterson at nose guard. Cisco at center. Owens back, gets a snap. He's looking to pass. He's looking downfield. There's, there's Makai Funaki. He's got one man to beat, and he's drugged down at the 19-yard line. Just did not have the wheels to get by him. Drugged down by number three, Gage Heap. 45 yards on a reception. Takes him down to the St. John's 19-yard line. Yes, thank you, Mr. Funaki. For those of you who aren't familiar with him, he's a uh, transfer this year. I believe, is it uh, nephew to Travis Udo? No, nephew to the Bells. To the Bells. Oh, all right. Oh, and looking to pass. He's got one. He's got Ortiz. Ortiz in the end zone. That is a touchdown. Owen oh, Young looking to Jovan Ortiz for a Round Valley touchdown. Jovan had him beat in the corner, back corner of the end zone, and picked him up. Give us an opportunity to show that Troy Merrill Farmers Insurance Elks touchdown. Okay, number 71 for Round Valley. Still don't have a name. Kevin Flores. Kevin, Kevin Flores, Flores back to kick. Number 71. It's up. And it is good. 71, Kevin Flores. Got to make note of that. So Round Valley now up 10-0 over St. John's with 6-16 left in the half. Oh, man, how good would it be to be sitting on the spirit couch right now? I wish I was there. Big shout-out to one of our sponsors, Cowboy Up Hay and Ranch Supply. Uh, they have veterans discounts. You just got to ask for them. They have the steel chainsaw fall sale right now, MS250 chainsaw, $50 off. Dog food specials. Um, you buy more than 10 bags, you can get $3 a bag off. They got new chicks, all of your saw equipment needs, hay, and all kinds of animal feed. Go down there and give Jeff a hard time, but uh, support him nonetheless. Happy that uh, they're willing to uh, help support us and what we do here on Let's Go Out. Ladies and gentlemen, the crowd getting fired up now. We are seeing some life in this crowd. So Round Valley be kicking. Kevin Flores, our kicker, number 71, will be kicking from the middle of the field. St. John's back at the 50 to receive. Not anticipating an onside kick. Looks like St. John's is set up for, for deep coverage. Just want to take a second, uh, Mr. Walker. Uh, we actually have no control over the camera angles during the plays. Uh, that 
is all being brought to us by the uh, Loft Legacy Team Productions. We will pass that information along, but we are just grateful to have them here with us. Some uh, local teens. Okay, apparently there was a the apparently there was a penalty on the point after touchdown. And they're so, forcing a kickoff. Yeah, yeah, so now we're kicking from the St. John's 45-yard line. So do you kick Pooch it short kick, and then yeah. bring it out? Pooch or? kick into the end zone. So St. John's will bring it out to the 20. I think in that case, that's where you onside. Yeah. I would, you know, try it. Kick the onside. Try to get it into the second tier, guys. If nothing, you're putting them back on the 25, right? Ah. And you're not bringing them all the way out to the 20. Or you can squib it down to around the 10-yard uh, line, hope they fumble it, and uh, you get them pinned down real close. But Yeah, I well, don't know. the beauty of onside is you always, get the you always have the shot at recovery. There's always that chance. So you're saying there's a chance. Well, you know, junior high, we use the onside quite a bit. <laughs> but... That's more because of the skills of our kickers. So, just saying. All right, so we got Thomas back. He, Iratullis on his feet, and he struggles to bring it out to the 25-yard line. Brown Valley in a four-man front, giving Tullis a little bit of running room. Yeah, that brings them out actually to the 26. So now second down on the St. Uh, St. John's on their own 26. Clock is running. We're at 5.50. James Thomas back in shotgun. He's got two backs there with him. Oh, now we got a flag from the umpire pointing at. Have we got blood? No. Number 88. We can't have an 88 as a guard. Ooh. Yes. So that's an eligible number. It's an ineligible number that's got to be between 50 and 79. Uh, I don't know that. I don't. Uh, it, uh, I don't think it's a penalty. I think they just forced the substitution. They forced the substitution because you can only. Out of the guys on the line, it has to be 50 and 79. Patterson going through to. Uh, Slade Nevin, and he brings it out to the, what, 33, 32? Yeah, so the way that works is if you have an ineligible number on the line, your line numbers have to be between 50 and 79. So you can't put number 88 at guard, not at this level. Yes. Now, JV, freshman, junior high, they don't really care about numbers, but at this level, they do. Well, if they do, so do I. Okay, so we got actually first and 10 now. Uh, St. John's on their own 33-yard line. Thomas under center. He's got twins. He's going to Ira Tullis. Nope, not Ira Tullis. How about Slade Nevin brings it out to the 35, just short of the 35. Gain of about two. Brought down by Cade Hogle. So we're starting to see some action on the line of scrimmage. Both teams really working between the tackles really hard right now, trying to establish their run game. Thomas back in shotgun. He's got one back back there with him. Ooh, oh, we, we got a, we, we got a little movement. Jump. Let's see. Uh, watching the replay now. That's going to be on the center. Ooh, rock back on his heels. That'll get you every time. Yep. He rocked back on his heels because of the adjustment by the defense. In a game like this, every yard hurts. Every yard, every yard you get penalized hurts. Thomas is back to pass. He airs it out across the middle, and it is not there. He was looking for Joseph Bushman, and Bushman was covered. I thought Seth was going to have a shot at that one, number one. I want to say Owen Young oh. with, the, with the coverage on that. Yeah. And Owen just picking him up and keeping him away from the ball. Could have been close. He brought that arm around the back. It almost it almost could have been pass interference. Right 
Okay, James Thomas back in his shotgun. He's got one back back there with him. Two wide, one in the slot. He's looking to pass. He's looking near side. It's up. We got bump and bump. Oh. Almost picked off by Rowdy Rivera. A little bit of a push off there, but the referee not really too concerned about it because I think he's going to tell him that that wasn't a catchable ball. Well, that, and he already had the inside position. If he had pushed him to gain the inside position, he probably would have flagged him for that. But since he was already inside, I think they – Yeah. I don't think you should call that one. I would let him play. Of course, it went our way. I'm going to say that, but – <clears throat> All right, Patterson back to punt. And we've got Riley Hamlin back to receive. Scooping it up off the ground. Still got a good punt off. Riley bobbles it a little bit, but takes it to the 40. Received it at the 35. Brings it out to the 40 before he's met by St. John's defenders. Uh, Ira Tullis and... Ira Tullis and Joseph Bushman. Two names we've been calling a lot tonight. In on the tackle on Riley Hamblin. So we're looking at 412. Round Valley's going to take over. Uh, they're on their own 40 yard line going in. Uh, they're on the far side hash. Let's see, we got Owen Young back in shotgun. He's got one back, Seth Wiltbank there with him. He's got two men in a, in a slot receiver. It's a handoff to Wilbank. Wilbank finding a crease on the outside. He's got one man to beat. He's down the field. He's at the 30, 20, 15, pushed out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Oh, my goodness. Seth Wilbank getting around Slade Nevin there on the, uh, on the outside, found a crease and hit the sideline. What a run by Seth Wilbank. That young man is having a great game tonight. Takes it down to the 19-yard line. They're on the St. John's 19-yard line going in. So far, it seems like it's been a game of whoever can make the big plays. Yes. Owen Young is shotgun. He's got Seth, Seth Wiltbank in the backfield with him. There's a handoff to Wiltbank. Wiltbank cutting a crease on the outside. Nobody to beat. He's in the end zone. And we've got a flag. Oh, man. Oh, no. I'm afraid this might be holding on Ortiz. Oh, no. Jovan, no. Seth was already by him, and Ortiz with the block. Oh, no. it was a face mask. Face mask? That's what I saw. Hands to the face, maybe? I know yeah, it was probably hands to the face. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, hands to the... We'll see what the official signals. Oh, we're not going to get a signal from the official. So, did he call hold? This is holding. That's holding? Yeah, that's holding. So, we got Ortiz with the hold. Timeout, Round Valley. After the penalty, all oh, those penalties hurt. Yeah, well, at least it's uh, biting both teams tonight. <laughs> well, we it are definitely to be a little one-sided, and crowds get rowdy. We are definitely seeing first-game jitters tonight. Oh, for sure. I think that's, oh, I know that song, but I can't win a candy bar. Dang it. Oh, man. Uh, what is that? Fun, fun, fun till daddy takes a T-bird away? Yes. Beach Boys, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. My parents used to listen to that. <laughs> I'm not going to say I'm old enough to appreciate the Beach Boys. They were a little before my time. All right, so after the penalty, Round Valley is back on their own 20. Uh, they've got first and 15 to go. Owen's back in shotgun, and he, I can't get the number of the back that's back there with him. He's back to pass. He's got Riley Hamlin for the touchdown. 
Round Valley comes back from the penalty and scores. Owen Young to Riley Hamblin for the touchdown. And that is literally the same corner that Ortiz scored his with. They are just attacking that side. They must have a scouting report about the defensive back on that side. Yep. Another Troy Merrill Farmers Insurance touchdown for the Round Valley Elks. So now we got Kevin Flores back to kick the point after. Kick is up, and it is good. So Round Valley jumping out to a 17-0 lead with 3.48 left in the half. So ladies and gentlemen, things are Things are settling into a good football game. We're seeing some miscues. We're seeing some things that need to be tightened up. But, hey, it's the first game of the season. We are in the Dome. We have fans. We have cheerleaders. We have everybody here. If you're not here, you are missing out. The atmosphere is terrific. People are glad to be in the Dome watching them some football. And the boys are not disappointing them at all. I, Ethan, I don't know what you think about this, but I, again, it is just exciting to be back on the field. I mean, the, with the sports schedule. Oh, the, it's awesome. I was so afraid that the, they were going to cancel the season, like so many other states did. I am so glad that Arizona didn't. I am glad they're letting the boys play. Thank you to the AIA for allowing the boys to play. Kevin Flores back to kick. Ball's up. It's away. Oh, little Ira bobble. Tullis has got the kick. He's out to the 30. He's got a block. He's at the 40. It's a foot race now. He's crossing Round Valley's 40. 30, 20, 10. He is in untouched with the run back. Found a seam and went to the house. Ira Tullis with the 85-yard kickoff return. That brings us to our first Jaron Burnham Farmers Insurance touchdown for the St. John's Redskins. Ira found a crease and just hammered it and took off the speed. The speed. The speed. Broke that first block and never looked back. Now, I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but uh, we have dueling farmer's insurance agents <laughs> for our touchdown coverage tonight. And so far, the score is two for uh, Troy Merrill, one for Jaron Burnham. So St. John's posting up the six with 333 left. Slate. Gage Tricky with the kick, and it is no good, no good. Ooh. Gage Tricky a little wide on that kick. So we got St. John's posting up a six with uh, 333 left. It is by no means over, ladies and gentlemen. These two teams are going to take this right down to the last minute. Indeed. And would you expect any less, really? I would hope for nothing less. Keep it exciting to the end. Well, you know, the one thing... The one thing that I've always loved about the St. John's Round Valley games, both playing them and watching them, is the amount of excitement that they bring. Because the, the two communities are so close-knit. You know, it's almost, like, it's almost like two cousins sitting down playing checkers and getting in a fist fight over it. Yep, nothing but love, though. So we got Gates Tricky kicking from the near side hash. Still only have 10 Redskins on the field. Give me somebody. We somebody, had, anybody. So let's say we had nine. We brought it up to 10. Now we've got 11. Now we got to move everybody around. Yep. No. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. All right. So Tricky's back to kick. 
We haven't blown Ray for play. Referees now blown at Ray for play. Tricky's in motion. There's the kick. Line drive. It's going to go in the end zone. So Round Valley's going to start on their own 20. Jovan couldn't get over to it. They kind of kicked it in the end zone away from him. So Round Valley will be starting from their own 20 yard line yes. right in the middle of the field. That was a prime example of those first game uh, hiccups as we were searching for 11 people to put on the field. <laughs> well, but they found them. It's always a little confusing that first game because you're so busy working on offense and defense, you, you know, special teams is something just the that. the redheaded stepchild of yep, football. And guys forget. Okay, St. John's, it looks like they're going to come with an outside blitz. Owen Young back in shotgun. Hands off to Seth. Seth brings it up the middle. Oh, and he's Ooh, hit immediately. Hard. Is that 33? That is 34. Mr. Dason, Dason Spencer. Spencer. Dason Spencer just met him at the line and put a nice tackle on him. Seth had nowhere to go. Owens back in shotgun. Looks like we've got a strong... Oh, he's rolling out to the weak side. There's Ortiz at the marker. He fights for another yard. Uh-oh. Now we got another penalty after the fact. Let's see what it is. Are we crowding the sideline? Do we have a little extra contact? Ah, uh, somebody might have said something they shouldn't have, maybe? Based on Morgan's body language, I don't think it's going to be favorable. Yeah, dead ball, personal foul against St. John's. I guess the official on that side thought that Ortiz had gotten out of bounds before he got hit. Hmm. So it looks like the St. John's crowd not exactly happy with that call. But that will take Round Valley all the way down to their 45-yard line. A far side hash, so... Let's say not that it makes it feel any better, but they had already gotten the first down. Well, you're just hoping that maybe the official was pulling the trigger a little early. These guys know this is a rivalry game. Oh, it's back in shotgun. They know it's a rivalry game, so maybe they're trying to take control early. Yeah, just get ahead of so it. So it doesn't get chippy. Oh, we got movement on the Round Valley side. Who is that over there? Uh, Trace and Merrill jumping off sides. So it looks like St. John's going to get five of the 15 back, taking Round Valley back to the 40-yard line. And, I, you know, I'm almost wondering if the refs didn't sit down and have a little conversation about this rivalry, the spirited nature with which these two teams play, and say, hey, look, we better can get control early and not let these guys start having at each other and make this a good, clean football game. Yeah, I can only imagine how many uh, eyes are on this opening week of football with everything that's been going on this year. Owen Young back in shotgun. He's got Seth right beside him. We've got two out wide with one in the slot. Oh, and yeah, hands off to Seth. He's hit. Seth, oh, he gets snagged by, he, he gets snagged by Dason Spencer just as he's tried to hit the crease and brought down at the 40 yard line. So now we're uh, second and 15. Yeah, got it back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Yeah, St. John's starting to pick up on that a little bit. They're starting to read that a lot better. Two minutes, about 15 seconds left on the clock here in the second quarter. So we got Owen Young deep. Shotgun, he's setting up to pass. He's got it. Oh. Tipped up in the air. That is so scary. I thought number 53 was going to have a play on it in the air, Jacob Skousen, but He was looking for tight end Trayson Merrill, number 12. And just out of his hands, just out of his hands. It's now our third and 15 from Round Valley's own 40-yard line. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Eric Hamlet's birthday. Can we give a round for Hamlet's birthday? One, two, three. <laughs> 
We just found out it's Eric Hamlin's birthday. Happy birthday, Eric Hamlin. Oh, and Young airing it out. Oh. oh. Lost it in the air. Didn't try making the adjustment. Turned Riley Hamlin the off the wrong shoulder. I think Riley kind of lost it, was looking for it, but just could not find it. Yeah, it was breaking back to the inside, side to take back outside when he switched shoulders. Just, I think he lost track of it. And it looked a, t a, a touch overthrown. A little bit. Ooh. So, do you have a number? Who is that? Back to punt for Round Valley. 15? Well, it ends in five, so it's got to be... Morgan Rona, maybe? Or is it 35? Oh, well, we wouldn't have, we don't we have, don't 35 have 35 on the roster. It's either Brandon Strickland or Morgan Arona. And Ortiz brought off the field. Looks like we've got illegal substitution. Well, 85 is down here. Yeah, so we got Morgan Arona back to kick. No, Morgan Arona is down here on the near side. Is that him on the near side? Yeah, that's 85. Well, that's 35. That's thir I don't have a 35. I don't have a 35 either. Oh. Ira Tolis. Ira Tolis. <laughs> so we got Ira Tolis picking it up at the 30 and taking the kick up to their own 35-yard line. A little bit of a, I thought that might have been a block in the back. I don't know, you know. <laughs> Special teams, it's a little hard to, it's a little hard to tell sometimes. So it looks like they spotted it just over the 35-yard line. Just oh. short of the uh, 36. Call it the 35 and a half. Yeah. Okay, so we got James Thomas back in shotgun. He's got, uh. Who is that? He's got Dayson Spencer beside him. Oh, oh bad snap. Dayson Pink, he throws it. Oh, pass reception to Slayton Evans. So bad snap, but uh, Thomas picks it up and makes the quick pass out to Slayton Evans. Oh, that could have been disastrous. Yes, sir. Quick thinking, quick hands, quick throw, and a quick four yards. Hats off to James Thomas. Boy, he took a bad situation and actually turned it into something good. A gain of four on that play when it could have been a loss of five. Thomas backed in a shotgun. Tullis next to him. Piss a, pass across the middle. We got Slade Nevin bringing it out. For, to the 49 for St. John's first down. It's just sitting wide open in that flat. Yeah. Well, you notice how they're bring, they're having a back stay back there with him to block. That time they had Ira Tullis back there blocking with him. Slade Nevin with a nice reception in the middle. Thomas back in shotgun. He's dropping back to pass. Tulsa's is looking. He's hit as he's thrown. And the ball falls short. And he does not make the connection with, with uh, Bushman. And we've got a flag on the far side official. Uh, he might be looking at that. Uh, I think some early contact maybe. What's he signaling? I can't see. Personal foul, face mask against Round Valley. Okay. Somebody must have got their hands up in the face of somebody. So that will give St. John's a first down. They'll bring it all the way down to the 44-yard uh, line. Yeah, they got 30 seconds to make something happen, though. That's still that's way a lot too of much. ground to cover. You don't give St. John's 30 seconds. 
That is way too much time. Tullus checking in at slot. You got Thomas back. Thomas drops back to pass. He airs it out. Oh! Oh no! Gage Heap on the, it was the intended target and we've got pass interference by number five, Jovan Ortiz. Let's watch it again here. Uh, yeah. uh, yeah, he's all over. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, I yeah. Didn't, I didn't see him put the hand on him, though. When the back, ju when the back, back judge brings his flag out, that's it's going to be P.I. Yeah. It just is. So now that brings St. John's down to the 29-yard line. First and 10 going in. Thomas back. seconds left. Empty backfield. He's back to pass. He's rushed. They, oh, he does not get back to the line of scrimmage. Could not avoid the pass rush. Round Valley bringing the house. And then immediate timeout called by St. John's. So now St. John's is on the Round Valley's 22-yard line, and Coach Morgan calls a timeout with 17 seconds. He wants to talk about this a little bit. Yeah. I wonder what the – do you know if they have a uh, kicking game? You know, I really don't. You know, if they get it down to the 15, are they just going to take a try at a field goal? Well, you've got second down. You've got 17 seconds. That's enough for two passing plays if you're quick. So I would assume he'd take two shots at the end zone and go in. He might take one shot and then kick. You know, That's remember, true. he's got one more he's timeout. One more timeout. So he can stop the clock, reset the team, and set up for the kick if that's what he decides to do. But theoretically, he has time for two plays. The only thing that will kill that is if they don't get the pass off because the ball won't be reset by the time uh, the clock runs out. So I would look for a quick pass here. Looks like he's setting up two receivers wide on the St. John's side. He's got a receiver in slot and two receivers on the Round Valley side, empty backfield. Thomas in shotgun formation. <laughs> I don't think there's anybody in this building that doesn't know what's about to happen. Yeah. <laughs> now, this would be a heck of an opportunity to run a lot of deep angles, and then take that quarterback draw. See which way the uh, pass rush splits and just try and get a decent chunk right up the middle. Sets up to pass. Backward. There it is. And is it touchdown? St. John's with a flea flicker. I haven't seen a flea flicker in years. St. John's pulling off the flea flicker and scoring with it. We now have a 17-12 ball game with seven seconds left. Ladies and gentlemen, if you thought Round Valley was going to run away with it, think again. We've got us a ball game. We got Jerem Burnham, Farmers Insurance, touchdown for the Redskins off of Flea Flicker. I did not get a number on who received it. I, saw I was in too much shock. I, I saw a three. So it was either Gage Tricky or Dason Spencer. I'm going to guess and say it was Dason Spencer. Let me see if it has been updated. St. John's setting up for the point after. Looks like they're going for two. James Thomas under center. Two in the backfield, one out wide. Oh, we got delay a game. That's going to back them up. Our stats guy hasn't updated it yet, so I can't even look at I that. believe that was Dason Spencer. But I, I want to believe you. I do. I think I saw 34. I'm not sure. I know I saw a three, <laughs> but that's <laughs> – sorry, folks. That's the best I can do. He had people all over him. And the house got very quiet. St. John's setting up for the point after on the eight. James Thomas under center. 
Two in the backfield, one at the receiver. He's looking for the quick pass. Oh, just over the head of Gage Heap in the end zone. So with seven seconds left, Round Valley is up by five in the second quarter. Let's see what happens with the touchdown. Yeah, maybe Round Valley will run this thing back. You never know. That feels a little optimistic, but hey, why not? With seven seconds, I wouldn't put it past Coach Morgan to kick it onside. I wouldn't put it past him either. I'm not hoping that he does it, but I would not put it past him at all. Yeah. Round Valley Tiny Homes, a sponsor for tonight's game. You can get a hold of them at 928-245-6863. Uh, each one sleeps four. They've got barbecue grills, and they feel more like a home than a motel. That's 510 North Main Street in Eager, Round Valley, Tiny Homes. That is another kind of big bummer this year is, you know, the, the tradition of running out on the field and doing the fight song with yep. the boys, that's not going to happen. So, Gage Tricky back to kick. It's a deep kick. Going back to Riley Hamlin. No, that's Ortiz. Ortiz has got one man to beat. Oh, he brings it out to the 45-yard line, and time has expired. That is the half, ladies and gentlemen. Round Valley 17, St. John's 12. Great run back. Uh, I'm sure that Round Valley is going to go in and want to make some adjustments. Uh, there is bound to be some conversation in that locker room, and for St. John's as well. I look for them to, I look for them to want to make some pretty serious adjustments. I don't think either coach could walk in there being completely or totally satisfied. So No, I can't imagine. A, a lot of places to improve for both teams, but still competitive. I mean, we got a five-point game here. So still... Uh... Oh, this is... Make no mistake, this is anybody's ball game at this point. I, you know... What's interesting to me is the scoring has come from big plays. We haven't seen... We haven't seen the just rumbling, tumbling down the field. No. Nope. So. <laughs> we'll see if we can't get Wes to come over here and join us for a minute. Yeah, I think we have a couple of dance performances and uh, some other things going on. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we want to honor some of our local heroes, some of the people that have been taking care of us these last few months. Please help me welcome Travis Udall, Round Valley Unified School District Superintendent, who is going to honor some of our local heroes. Ladies and gentlemen, Travis Udall. Presentation by Travis Udall. I don't know if you guys can hear Wes. Wes is part of the game administration tonight. I don't know if you can hear him or not. Alrighty, we're going to take a quick look at some of the stats for this evening. We've got 96 total rushing yards, average rushing yards. We're looking at uh, 
six yards per rush. We've got 160 passing yards already. Average of uh, 12, a little over 12 yards per passing attempt. Um, six first downs. And I'm not sure about the stats on third down conversions. But we'd like to thank uh, our own Stephen Pena for uh, keeping track of those stats for us, giving us something to look at, something to think about, something to talk about. Now, I didn't hear, was this the uh, dance team or the cheerleading squad? No, this is the Round Valley dance team. This is the dance team. Round Valley now has a dance team. So, Jenny, what... So the word I'm getting is that Genuine Dance is now a part of the school. So Genuine Dance is, the Genuine Dance team is actually the Round Valley Dance team now. Or at least during the school year. Well, that's nifty. Yeah, I, I like the idea of the dance team being in black and gold. I like it too. Kind of reminds me of the old days when we had a palm line. Well, while you guys are watching the dance, I, I'm going to make a couple observations. I, this has been a defensive battle. Yes, there's been both teams have given up some big plays. But overall, the game control between the tackles has been outstanding on both sides of the ball. I haven't seen a lot of miscue by either team between the tackles. St. John's is getting having a little difficulty dealing with our overall team speed on the outsides, but I think they've made some adjustments that have slowed that down. Um, Round Valley, same thing. Defensive ends are playing a little tight and giving up the crease, so you know, I'm sure that's what the coaches are going to try to go over and line out in the locker room. Yeah. And both teams are going to discuss, guys, the <laughs> offensive line has got to give the quarterback time to pass the ball. Yeah, we cannot be having these penalties. Both teams struggling with penalties right now. Yeah. I. The penalties, the penalties I don't really worry about. It's first game. In the season, you're going to have a little bit of that anyway. Uh, team discipline. Uh, you never know how everybody's going to act until they actually get in the game. So, I don't know. Some of the personal foul penalties are a little rough, though. That might be a bit much. This is an awesome routine that Dance has put together. Yeah. Too bad they didn't give us a roster. We could actually tell you who they are. I know. I recognize a few faces, but I don't want to say anything for fear of leaving somebody out. I mean, I can only imagine how much time went in to that routine. Of course, hopefully they're better at, uh, you know, remembering choreography than I am. Yeah. I'd like to give a big shout-out to our halftime sponsor, Backwood Tees. That's Boyd and Jamie Holsey. Um, they do screen printing, embroidery. Uh, you know, if you're looking for things for your business, you know, events, family reunions, even sports teams, Whatever occasion, they can create shirts, caps for your needs. Just bring them your own, your designs in, or they'll give you some ideas. You know, they're there to help you make it happen. Um, that's Boyd and Jamie Holsey, 928 245 2860, Backwood Tees, and Facebook at Backwood Tees. Thank you again. And a big shout out to the uh, Loft. Legacy Team Production Center and their camera work tonight. Lucky to have them.
Wow, so the cheerleaders are bringing it tonight too. So the dance team showing their enthusiasm. Now we got the cheerleaders bringing it. We're getting a good show right now. Yeah, I'm liking the uh, halftime performances thus far. job by the cheer squad. Hey, so while we're taking a break in the action, I did get a text on an announcement that, uh, let's see. So here's an announcement from the student council. Looks like every touchdown student body officers will be thrown out t-shirts and beads. Uh, your student body president is Owen Young. Vice president is Ada Mortensen. Treasurer is Carly Hawes. Secretary, Bryant Phelps. Social chairs are co-chair Riley Hawes and co-chair Emily Muth. Historian is Emma Young. Advisors are Jerry Coombs and Lisa Muth. So that's your student council and advisors. And a uh, special shout out to Jerry Coombs. We wish her the best as she recovers from her illness right now. All right, um, I'm gonna take this time to give some of our sponsors a little bit of love. It's been so action packed, I haven't been able to call out a lot of them. Now, I don't know if you got a, any of it, uh, Dan, but right before we started, we ordered in some Goobs pizza and oh, it yeah. was delicious. You know what, somebody got all of the olives. Somebody got all the olive pizza. I, I wanted I had it. one of them. <laughs> I thought you were the one on the group text I, complaining about olives. No, I wanted the olives. I wanted the olives. Oh, maybe it was Steven that didn't like the olives. It was Steven. I believe okay. it was Steven that didn't want the olives. At any rate, Goob's Pizza, they do free delivery. They will even the deliver olives. to a rodeo or a football game. Um, and they extend their lunch specials later into the afternoon on game days. Um, they do birthday parties. You can reserve table space. They got the arcade in the back. Love, Goob, love Goob's Pizza. It's a great time. Great place to take the family. We got Into the Woods photography they uh, made the season books last year and they capture a wide variety of memories and events so if you need some uh, help in the uh, photography department get with into the woods photography Did you hear? what's that Steven Okay, I, I, my sound's slow. It's better now. It's better now. Quite a half. Oh, very much so. Very Indeed. much so. Tail of two quarters almost, you know. Nice job. The Redskins coming back, making a game of it before half. Quite a, quite a rally there. Yes, definitely a game of the big play. Yeah. Well, and you know, the, what's interesting is, with the defensive stand being what it is, uh, St. John's putting in their, their five-man front, bringing all their linebackers one side or the other, hardly ever really blitzing the middle hard. But they, they've they obviously done their homework because depending on Round Valley set, they seem to know right up front where we're going. Yeah. So hats off to Coach Morgan for doing his homework tonight. I They seem to be on top of the offense that Round Valley's bringing to the table. But even with that, I mean, Seth Wilbank, this is his ball game right now. Hey, that That's true, he's over 100 yards right now uh, unofficially as I'm keeping the stats. But the other thing, Seth, or uh, Owen Young, he's thrown some dimes tonight. He's been on the money. He was, that one pass to Panaki early was four, three inches long, you know? Yeah. But other than that, almost every pass has been right on the money. Well, and there was there was concern yeah. about how well he would recover from his broken leg last year. And I, you know, yes, there's a little bit of rust because this is the first game for him in a long time. But at quarterback, uh, he did play tight end last year. Right. But at quarterback, I think he's looking pretty good. Oh, he, I, 
I'm impressed by what I'm seeing. I mean, beautiful touch on a couple of balls tonight. Just, I mean, exactly what was needed. Didn't gun it in there, just put it over the top, the defender, right into the receiver's hands. Two or three beautiful balls. So you talk about up. you talk about how much Morgan's been on top of things so far. What do you, what do you say at halftime? What is he in there talking about? What are they going to come out with adjustment wise in the second half? Well, you got to Morgan's got to tell his defense to stay disciplined and don't get in a big hurry and rush to the ball. They have to maintain they have to maintain their discipline on the field and not get wrapped up in just chasing the ball around because if they stay in position, they can keep Seth contained. When the defensive ends get in a big hurry and they crash hard, he takes advantage of it. He takes advantage. He gets to the crease and he's a, he's gone. So what does Bell say? What do you think Bell had to say to at half? Oh, uh, if I'm, I know it was calm and collected. Whatever sure it was, was, it was very quiet yeah. and very peaceful. I'm is, surprised is I was. couldn't hear. I'm surprised I couldn't hear Coach Haas from up here. You didn't feel it? I've felt Haas a couple times. I'm like sure. Right I'm sure Haas is telling his interior line, <laughs> get your blocks. We've got to have time to get those plays off. Yep. You're not giving us the time. Do the job. I, I'm i almost certain that's the conversation at this point. Because yeah. That's where most of the pressures come. Has been out, uh, so up they're the not picking up the blitz. Some yeah. great some great credit to Owen Young, though. You guys already said it when I first started listening, is his passes have been on point. He's, he's really been placing the ball where it needs to be. And so it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. We almost have a clean ball game. I mean, to see St. John's exploit the very end of that, to almost bring it back to a tie game. I mean, it's anybody's ball game right now. Well, here's what it, here's what's impressing me. Normally, when Round Valley gets a 17-point lead on St. John's, we kind of feel that rollover moment. But we're not seeing that tonight. We're seeing a chippy little St. John's team that's deciding they're going to stick in this thing. This is anybody's ball game, and I'm sure it's going to remain that way until the fourth. Well, guys, we are just minutes away from the start right now. Three minutes rolls back onto the clock as we get ready for the second half. Guys, I hope you're enjoying the show. Ethan's taking good care of you. I'm sure Dan's taking good care of you. I'm watching it over there like one of y'all on the stream right now. A huge thanks again right there, boom, to Backwoods Tees for being our halftime sponsor, Jamie Holsey. If you give them an idea, you give them a concept, you give them a logo, they'll take care of you. One of my favorite hoodies I've ever had is the one I got from them last year, their Elks hoodie. And so see the Holseys, Backwoods Tees, a huge thanks again to our halftime sponsor. Guys, enjoy the second half. I got to go down there with another microphone. See you in a half. Gentlemen, take care. Yeah, you knew Wes couldn't stay away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he set the music and came on right on over. You knew that was going to happen. I, I had to stand up. Oh, that metal chair. I don't blame you. I'm starting to wonder if I had enough water. Yeah. So it looks like we're going to start... It looks like, since Round Valley received, St. John's deferred, so it looks like St. John's is going to start with the ball. So this is going to be very interesting now because St. John's is going to be on offense. Round Valley is going to start on defense. So I, like I said earlier, I don't think this is, I don't think this is going to be a runaway. Uh, I look for St. John's to come out and attack hard and early. Yes, St. John's getting ready. Still a minute 27 on the clock, but we're anxious, we're excited. We have some uh, St. John's sponsors tonight. Rest your rump in St. John's, 928-245-9984. They encourage you to text your order in. That's to rest your rump there in St. John's. And I know I saw Diamond C feed in there somewhere. If you're at St. John's Way, you need some animal feed, some hay, go see the good folks at Diamond Sea. All right, so Round Valley lining up to kick from the north side, 40. St. John's back to receive from the 50. So we've got uh, Kevin Flores back to kick, ready for play. The kick is up. A kick is down to the 10, fielded by Dion Perry. Dion Perry bringing it out to the 30-yard line. That's a good, solid 20-yard return. That's a nice return, and that gives St. John some decent field position. Kyron Clark brings, brings him down. 
You know, I think it's really interesting the way St. John's kick returners attack the middle of the field. You know, a lot of returners will try to hit the sideline. These guys are attacking the center of the field, which I think is, I think it's awesome because you're basically telling the defense, I dare you to tackle me. So we got Thomas back and shotgun. He's got two, he's got two backs with him, two tight receivers. Tallis gets buried three yards behind the line of scrimmage. Oh, no, that was not Tullis. I'm sorry, that was Slade Nevin. Slade Nevin with the carry. And with the loss, uh, they mark progress, a loss of one yard. So St. John's back at the 29, for, uh, second down and 11. This will be an interesting test for Round Valley's defense at this point. They need a good defensive stand in this series. And conversely, this would be a great opportunity for St. John's to come out with a strong offensive series yeah, as well. They, they had all the momentum heading into half. 11, Thomas back, he's a pass. It, the reception out at the 35, I'm gonna try to get you a number. Looks like number three, Gage Heap, with the reception out to the 35 yard line, a little quick pass on what looked like some sort of slant route. Yeah, nice little chunk of yards. Hit as soon as he caught it. I like this style of football, picking away three and five at a time. Big plays are nice, but you can't, you really can't, you can't plan on that. So you got Thomas back in shotgun with one back. He's looking to pass. He's rolling out far side. Oh, and he's picked up at the 38-yard oh, line. Close. That is real close. Depends on the spot. Trayson Merrill might have. Depends on the spot. It's going to be close. The first. Oh, oh they're they giving him the it. first down. Looked like Trayson got him at the line. Yeah, it must have fallen forward on over it. Yeah, it must have. It, it looked close from here. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. Defense can bend, just don't break. <laughs> Thomas back in shotgun. He's got Tullis in the backfield with him. Two receivers right, two receivers left. Hand off to Tullis up the middle. Not much there. He does get, he does manage to get a couple yards. Ground Valley being pretty stingy in the middle right now. So we got second down and seven. Ball spotted on the St. John's 43 yard line. Round Valley in a five man defensive front. St. John's in shotgun formation. Two, two receivers left, two receivers right, one in the backfield. Hand off to Tullis in the middle. He's caught in traffic and driven back. Uh, looks like a loss of about a yard on that. Uh, looks like Strickland and Pancake Cisco in on the tackle. Stuffing that hole. No, I'm sorry, Keanu Clark and Jaden Cisco for the stop. Yes, I know uh, he prefers Pancake, but I just wonder how his mother feels about it. We had to get it off early. Oh! oh! So Thomas, Thomas drops back to pass deep. Airs one out to uh, Heap. No, to Joseph Bushman. Gets tied up with Rowdy Rivera. Ball squirts straight up in the air. <laughs> and Bushman comes down with it. The ball falls in his lap as he's laying on the ground. St. John's now... It's a Round Valley 31-yard line going in. Hey, sometimes you'd rather be lucky than good, huh? Wow. Thomas back in shotgun. He's got three receivers right, one receiver left, one in the backfield. Fake the handoff, go across the middle. Oh, broken tackle. Broken tackle. We got ne Slade Neville with the reception of seven-yard gain, taking it down to the... Round Valley uh, 
15, down by 14 yard line? Yeah, it looks like about a seven yard pass, broke the tackle and got another roughly seven yards. We got three receivers right, one receiver left. Thomas back in shotgun. He's got Tullis back there with him. Hand off to Tullis up the middle. Tullis is met by Cisco. Let's see, we had, uh, who else was in on that with Cisco? Trying to get it off the replay, 28 and eight. So we had uh, Casey Mortensen and Kate Hogel in with Cisco on that stop. Hogel having a quiet night tonight. You know, he really is. We haven't said his name a lot. Thomas and shotgun looking for a pass. He's looking at the end zone. The ball's picked off by Ortiz. Ortiz is trying to get across the 10 out to the 13 yard line. Oh, that is a drive killer for St. John's. So close. But that was a play Ram Valley desperately needed to stop that drive. Hey, he giveth and he taketh away. <laughs> you get to pick one up while you're laying on your back for like 40 yards and then you get it taken away on the five yard line. Ortiz jumps that route and then legs it out for about four or five yards. Which if he didn't, he had a man open in the end zone. Oh yeah. So that corner was wide open, wide open. Heath was un or Thomas was under pressure. I don't know how much that played into that. Yeah, maybe he didn't quite get as much under it as he wanted. But Ortiz definitely played that route very efficiently. We got uh, an equipment adjustment here. Yep, something's going on with Joe Vaughn's pad again. <laughs> He's having a hard time keeping that sleeve down over the shoulder pad. And for some reason, these officials are overly concerned about that. Young under center, gives it to Wiltbank. Wiltbank's across the 15, still on his feet. Flipped around to the 17 yard line. Well, he ran, Second down. He ran 30 yards and gained about four. <laughs> yeah. He is definitely a lateral runner. Yes. So we've got second and eight for Round Valley on their own 17-yard uh, line. Yeah. That St. John's defender was fighting hard for that ball, too, but couldn't oh. come up with it. Oh, you know they want that ball back. And, you know, hats off to Wiltbank for protecting it, keeping it high and tight like that. Owen oh, Young under center. Seth Wilbank in the back, hand off to Ortiz. Ortiz is picked up and buried for a loss of about two, maybe three yards on that. We got We've got a flag the by the side. near side official. Holding Round Valley. Uh, the number is 12. Number 12 for Round Valley, so that'd be Trace and Merrill with the hold. That'll back him up, 10. Still second down. Rowdy Rivera reporting in. Riley Hamblin coming out. Uh, just in from the sideline, looks like Makai Funaki has taken his pads off. We'll try to get you some information on that and find out what's going on. It was reported earlier this week that he had an injury and his, whether or not he would play was questionable. Maybe that injury flared up again. Young and shotgun, he's in the end zone. He flips it out, looking for Trace and Merrill and nothing's there. And we got a flag coming out. We got procedure, Round Valley. So that's gonna back us up half the distance to the goal. Uh, looks like we had too many men in the backfield from what I can tell. We didn't have eight on the line. Now does that carry a loss of down? Well, St. John's is wisely declining the penalty so that it's third down. So down. Yeah. yeah. No, if they would have taken it, they'd have backed up half the distance and then replayed second down. So St. John's has taken that shot away from them. Owen Young is in shotgun. He's on the two. 
Receives the snap, trying to stay out of the end zone. Airs it out, he's looking for Riley Hamlin. Riley Hamlin with a big reception out to the 38 yard line. Oh, did he get Round Valley out of a hole. Ooh, Owen Young with a pass. bomb to Riley Hamlin on the far sideline. And Riley Hamlin getting down to the 38 yard line. I mean, Riley Hamlin had his man by a good yard or two. He could even afford to slow down and let that pass catch back up with him. Owen Young has almost as many yards passing right now as the team has in rushing offense. That to me, I mean, when was the last time Round Valley did that? It was at Seymour's era, the last time they had those kind of passing yards. So the Bells are definitely trying something new. So Round Valley trips to the left. We got Kyron going in motion. Young taking the snap and rolling outside. He's fighting for the 40. Gets down to the 46. Owen Young fights down to the 46 yard line on the keeper, finding a crease on the outside and exploiting it. That's a good hard runner from the quarterback there. Owen Young posting up some yardage tonight. So we are looking at second and three on the Round Valley, just shy of the 46 yard line. Looks like Round Valley's trips right again. One receiver left. Seth Welbank in the back. Owen in shotgun formation. Here's the snap. Owen's rolling out to the left. He sees a crease. He keeps it. He's across the 50. Here we go. He is at the 47 yard, St. John's 47 yard line. Oh no, looks like we got a red skin. Oh, he's back up. Number 15. Wait, Morgan we Jimberly. got Joseph we got a kid Bushman. limping around. Who is that? He's getting off. That's Mr. Bushman there. Joseph. Number 50 for Round Valley. Oh, we got number 50 down. 50 or 60. Oh, he's blending in with the uh, field markings there. I, I can't didn't even see him. The kid's laying so that I can't see his number. I think it's number 60, it's Cutter 60. Williams. Yep. It is, it's Cutter Williams. Looks like he's got a, looks like an ankle or maybe a knee. Probably an ankle the way he's walking. Yeah, a little ginger on it. Yeah, a little shaken up on that play. I think he got tied up with Bushman on that, didn't he? I think so, because Bushman limped off. 60 was slow to get up, and he, Mr. Williams, was able to get himself off under his own power. So glad to see that from both yep. sides. Round Valley, Round Valley huddling up on the yard marker. Coach Baca now on the sideline. Now they're rushing over to get the ball off. Rushing over to get into formation. Let's see, we got two right, three to the left, empty backfield. Young gets a snap, drops back to pass. He airs it out. He's looking for Wilbank. Oh, Ooh, Wilbank little, is hit hard. Wow. Have to look at By that Ira Tullis. It looks like on the pass rush, it looks like Mr. Patterson might be guilty of, yeah, roughing the passer. St. John's is going to get... Looks like Mr. Patterson is going to pick up roughing the passer penalty tonight. St. John's fans definitely not happy with that call. Seth Wilbank took a shot from Ira Tullis downfield near the 28-yard line. Good defensive play by Ira Tullis. Cannot take that away from him at all. Because if Seth, that would have been a big first down. Of course, with the penalty, <laughs> we're right down there anyway. So, yeah, that was all for naught. Okay, so we got three right, no, one receiver left. One back in the backfield. Ortiz in motion, going back the other way. KC Mortensen out to the seven, 15, 17. What is that, uh, about? 11 yards? Yeah, 15 yard line, first down. KC Mortensen with the big first down right there. 
Looks like we're catching St. Don's on their heels just a little bit. Round Valley's offense turning up the pressure. They, yeah, that DN had some good penetration, but not able to seal it off. Got a block, got around him, and was able to bring it up the field. Nice chunk of yardage there. Unfortunately, I think it was his penetration that allowed Mortensen to get around that end. Young back in shotgun. He's got fake. He throws it back side. Oh, Riley Hamblin evades the tackle. He's across the 10 yard line. Tackled inbounds. Oh, I thought he was going to get hit for a loss, but he evades the tackle and gets across. He gets out to the 10 yard line. Riley Hamblin with a. Oh, that was a nice, nice run by Riley Hamblin. Yeah, tremendous second effort. I mean,. He could have easily went down. It would have only been about a yard on that reception. Instead, fights off, picks up the other four, make it about a five-yard gain. So Owen Young in shotgun formation. Kate Hogle right next to him. Trips to the right, one left. We got illegal substitution, St. John's. Seems they wanted to bring an extra backer in. Sorry, can't play with 12. <laughs> it yeah. would be nice, but. So that's going to back St. John's up five. So that will take Round Valley. Oh, that's going to be close to a first down. I think that is a first down. I think it's first and goal. Yep, five. it is now first and goal from St. John's five. Round Valley was in this position before early in the first quarter and only got a field goal out of it. Let's see what they can do now. We got trips right. One wide left, one receiver. He rolls out, he's looking for the end zone. Touchdown, Round Valley, with the connection to Jovan Ortiz. Jovan Ortiz with the Troy Merrill Farmers Insurance touchdown, Round Valley Elks. Jovan Ortiz with the reception right at the goal line. Defender a little slow getting out there with him, which is kind of surprising. Round Valley setting up for the point after. Kevin Flores setting up to kick. He has been on fire tonight. He hasn't missed one yet. He's a dual athlete. You know, he plays for the boys' soccer team. Nice. Another kick. It's up and it's good. Round Valley with a 24-12 lead with 340 left in the third. So, ladies and gentlemen, we were calling out number 35 earlier. That is one of my former players, Riker Marble. Just to let everybody know, we haven't forgotten him. Showing Riker some love. In fact, I gotta write that down right now. Thank you for letting us know that. 35, Riker Marble. All right, as we get set up for a kickoff here from Round Valley, Big shout out to Katie Hunt, Rodan and Fields. Uh, you know, go to her Facebook page, check her out, get some good deals. 480-299-2110 and treat yourself. If you can name that reference. Leave it in the comments section. Having a funny discussion up here in the booth. It was just, so, somebody was telling me, well, how about an onside kick? And I'm thinking, no, you don't want to give St. John's field position in the third quarter. Maybe late in the fourth, but definitely not the third. I love the thought, but no. Nah. Jaden Cisco to kick. Pancake with the squib kick. It gets down to the 25 yard line. Tullus picks it up and he gets buried at the 35. The ball comes loose. I don't know who's got it. I think they called it down. Yeah, they called him down. So all of that was extracurricular. St. John's will have the ball on the on their own 35-yard line. Pancake Cisco, that's Jaden, <laughs> uh, with the nice little squib knuckleball kick. Probably not one of the prettiest kicks you'll ever see, but definitely effective. 
Yeah, I, I agree. They probably won't kick deep to Tullis. They're going to make them earn the reception. So, And that, that ugly little knuckleball had probably one of the ugliest bounces I think I've seen. <laughs> Makes them hard to, to uh, catch anyways. Sure does. So we got uh, – we got Thomas in the backfield and shotgun. He's got two DBs back there with him. He gives the 22. That'd be Slade Nevin. Slade Nevin gets hit. Uh, he might have might gained have a yard, yard yeah. maybe two. I think they're going to mark progress two yards from the last scrimmage. So that takes them, what, to the 37? I believe so. Yeah. 37, 38 in that neighborhood. Thomas doing a lot of work from shotgun tonight. He's got Tullis in the backfield with him. Two receivers right, one receiver left. He's dropping back to pass. He's airing it out downfield. Oh, we got a little bit of grabbing oh, going on. Yep. Yeah. Rowdy Rivera got beat on that route by Dion Perry. Reached out and grabbed his jersey. Oh, no. Yeah, that was that was pretty pretty clear to see. I didn't think he was going to get away with that one. You know, the old the old saying is is if you can see it on the game film, it's definitely a penalty. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure if you're watching our feed right now, you saw the same thing we did. So, oh, that is a horrible penalty. It puts St. John's across the 50-yard line now. They're on Round Valley's 47, first and 10. Thomas back in the shotgun. Tullis trying to block for him. Airs it out to Nevin. Nevin fighting. Oh, are we going to get a flag on that? No, it doesn't look like we are, and St. John's is not happy. Might have been a little bit of a late hit on the sideline. I don't know where his feet were. Was he still in bounds? Hey, everybody up here is saying he was still in bounds. So St. John's definitely wanting the late hit call and not getting it. St. John's now second and four for the first down on their own 48-and-a-half uh, yard line. Is that about right? I think it's about the 42. Oh, um, it is a 42. The Round Valley's 42. Yeah, it is Round Valley's 42. Thank you. I was trying <laughs> to make sense of that, and I couldn't. No, they're on the 62-yard line. Oh, ah, I'm having I like a, that. I'm having a rough night. <laughs> Thomas with shotgun. He's rolling around. He's got nobody to throw to. He scrambles. He might be close to a first down. Uh, it's a looks really like good gonna spot him about a yard short of first. Ah, good. So he's a yard short. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he's got two yards, third and two for the first down on the Round Valley 39-yard line. Or Round Valley 61-yard line, if you call it like I do. Can't believe I did that. Hey, it's their first game. It's our first game. So Thomas under center, Tullis in the backfield. Double tight. Hand off to Tullis in the middle. Ooh. Little delayed draw I for him. I think he's got it. Yeah, he's got it. Not by much, though, but he's, it's going to be close. He fought hard, but he got it done. Do you see that little delay? He waited. Yep. He waited for his offensive line to make a hole for him, and then he just exploited it. Now that patience paying off, keeping the drive alive. You know, St. John's is St. John's is putting up a good game. Ravelli is too. This is a lot better game than I thought it was going to be. Can you believe we're down to a minute left in the third quarter? Where did the third quarter go? I have no idea. Thomas in shotgun. He's looking out to pass. He throws it out. Oh, picked off. He is picked off by Jovan Ortiz. He evades a tackle. Oh, he gets down to the three, the two yard line. Do we have laundry on the field? I don't see any. We are clear. Joe Vaughn 
with a 67 yard interception takes it all the way down to the St. John's four yard line. Oh, another backbreaking interception on a great drive by Jovan Ortiz. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think he just really overthrew who he had out in the flat, unfortunately, but right into the arms of Ortiz and tremendous run back. Ran out of steam coming in, or else he might have had six on his hands. Uh, Ortiz coming up with two big interceptions. Basically drive killers. Now you got South Whitbank fighting down to the one yard line. I. You know, I don't know. I That is what, the second drive Ortiz has killed for St. John's? What a momentum shift right here in the third quarter. This game has been emotionally just a roller coaster. It has been up and down. R Round Valley inside the St. John's one yard line. St. John's trying to tighten up their defense. Round Valley tightening up their offense. Twenty-two. Yeah, they're trying to get twenty-two back on the clock. Clock ran down to sixteen. There we go. So do we? St. John's goes to their sideline. Do we have timeout? What do we? Nope. No, there's no timeout. Okay, this is interesting. Oh, okay, so the far side official is signaling timeout from St. John's. Unfortunately, he didn't tell the rest of the crew. Round Valley was thinking they had time to run a play. Now they're just going to stay out there because they don't have time to huddle up on the timeout. Little, hey, it's the ref's first game too. <laughs> <laughs> it's 9 o'clock. I'm sure he's tired. It's oh, probably man. been a long day at the office. Well, and one thing to keep in mind, too, is all the emotions we're feeling right now, the officials are feeling, if not more, because they're down there a part of it. So, you know, I'm not going to begrudge these guys, not, a, not one bit. Having been in that position, it's easy to get lost and wrapped up in what's going on. All right. Okay, let's... now they're going to give everybody time out again. So, <laughs> all right. so now we have an official time out. Is this a mulligan? Are yeah, we... this is a mulligan. So St. John's going to their sideline. Round Valley coming to their sideline. We got a little break in the action. Again, I cannot emphasize enough. In the second half, in the third quarter, Jovan Ortiz with two. Count them, two. St. John's Redskins drive-killing interceptions and oh. big runbacks. I, you couldn't ask for a better play at a better time. That's what they needed. That's what they got. You know, I, you get fearful. You get the penalties that put St. John's in scoring position, and then just when you think they're about to go in, you get the pick and almost the pick six. I... Well, before this third quarter winds down to nothing, I would like to give a big shout out to our third quarter sponsor, Sierra Propane. Sierra Propane, your only locally owned propane company. They've been serving your family for over 36 years. They have great new customer offers, uh, and they're a company that has been built on service. Thank you for sponsoring the third quarter, Sierra Propane. Owen Young under center with the keeper. He punches it in for the touchdown. Round Valley posting up another six. Nice. For another Troy Merrill Farmers Insurance Round Valley touchdown. I, again, shout out to the loft. I am loving the angles they're getting us. That goal line right there, yes, that was, I, yes. Wes is over here. Did you see that? Yes, I saw it. I got it right here on my monitor, too. That was awesome. So now we got Kevin Flores back to kick. Low snap. Kick is up. And it is good. Round Valley 31, St. John's 12, with 18 seconds left in the third quarter. So now we're looking at a three-possession game for St. John's. I don't know. One quarter. Can it be done? It, well, it can. 
Remember, St. John's is still a very dynamic football team. And this team in particular, I'm not seeing I'm not seeing a lot of quit in these guys. So I I still am not writing this off as a Round Valley victory yet. I'm not counting St. John's out. I have a lot of respect for the St. John's football team, the St. John's coaching staff. Uh, they work hard. They, So I still believe that they're in it, and I still believe they're in it to win it. Oh, I believe it. So Flores lining up in the midfield, right in the center of the field, lining up for the kick. Tullis and Perry deep to receive. Let's see what Flores does. The kick is a squib kick in the middle. It goes to Gage Heap. Gage Heap trying to get to the outside and is buried at the 35 yard line. We've got uh, Morgan Arona and Gage Slade in on the tackle along with Riker Marble. Those three picking up the tackle. Those guys really sealed that off and kept him from turning that corner. If Perry would have gotten that corner, he'd have been gone. He's got that kind of speed. So now we got an official's timeout while he's giving a sideline warning to St. John's for interfering with the chain crew. I don't know why the side judge isn't making that call and why the referee feels he needs to. But, you know. Indeed. That's not. Okay, it looks like there's a change in quarterback. No, it's Thomas. Thomas gets buried by Pancake Cisco and Kyron Clark. And uh, KC Mortensen just nowhere to go on that. And that's the end of the quarter. St. John's is on their own 34-yard line. So now we're going to switch sides of the field. So Round Valley with a big third quarter, some miscues. But, you know, overall, Round Valley had a big third quarter. And I think that's exactly what they needed coming out of the locker room. Big penalties, big plays. <laughs> Bold statement by the pet band playing another one bites the dust at the end of the third quarter of play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the band making a statement playing another one bites the dust. <laughs> Oh, that's, uh, yeah, uh, maybe a little overly optimistic with 12 minutes left in this football game. <laughs> Might have a word with the conductor on that one. Again, while we're uh, flipping sides of the field, I hope you guys are enjoying the filming that the loft is doing for us tonight. Guys, I can't tell you. I mean, if you if you watched last year's cast and you're watching this game tonight, this is a preview of what's to come the rest of the season. I hope we can take these guys everywhere we go. I probably won't make the trip to Safford, but, man, it would be nice to have them down there. Yeah, it's not going to stop us from asking, I can tell you that much. Oh, these angles are great. We have got all sides of the fields covered. It is awesome. So we got Thomas under center, two in the backfield. He's handing off to, let me get a number. Oh, he's buried. Number 20. Ira Tullis buried by Gannon Earhart. Gannon Earhart and Casey Mortensen with the tackle. So now we're looking that was Hogel, was that eight? Third and Kate Hogel 11. and Gannon Earhart with the tackle. Sorry, I had to go off. I didn't think anybody wanted to hear that. Yeah, overthrown looked like more than anything. A little bit of contact, but it seemed mutual to me. But what do I know? Uh, you know, if you're going to throw P.I., you need to be consistent. I <laughs> Well, you know, as, as overthrown as it was, it was pretty tall. I don't 
Maybe they just decided it was not catchable. Well, but see, that's the thing. That's not a rule. Catchability yeah. is not a rule in high school football. It's either PI or it's not. It's got nothing to do with catchability or any of that. That's NFL stuff. So we got St. John's back to punt. Patterson to receive the deep snap. Patterson gets a snap. He gets the kick. Oh, oh it hits his own player. It's short. Get on the ball. Round Valley's on the ball. Recovered on the by Morgan Arona, number 85. Morgan Arona recovers the ball on the muff punt. It ends up at the 36-yard line. Oh, Round Valley no. with Round Valley with excellent field position now as they are on the St. John's 36 going in. The punt, Patterson kicked a ball in the ball hit Thomas in the shoulder, shot straight up and fell right at Morgan Rona's feet. He was able to fall on it. Owens back in the back in shotgun. Hands off to Wilbank. Nice block. He gets to the crease. There, St. John's fighting for the ball now. He gets a gain of about three, maybe four yards on that. Oh. So, nice little run there by Seth Wilbank. I keep taking my headset off because everyone keeps asking me questions, and I'm. <laughs> Ortiz reporting in, Seth Wilbank coming out. Owen Young setting up in uh, shotgun with Casey Mortensen immediately to his right. Ortiz in motion. Casey Mortensen right up the middle. Oh, we're going to have. A, was that a hold? That's in holding territory. Casey Mortensen with an eight yard run, hmm. but it looks like we're going to have a holding. This will be a holding call against Pancake. Oh, Pancake. Center Jaden Cisco, AKA Pancake with the hold, will bring that, negate that run, bring Round Valley back five yards. So it'll be second and, second and 13, 14. Uh, we got the umpire spot in the ball one place and the yard marker on the other. So yeah, looks like second and 13 for Round Valley. Ah, just average him. From the St. John's 38 yard line. Owen under center, one in the backfield, two left, two right. He rolls out, fakes a handoff, he airs it out. Oh! oh bobble. It, no, it was not intercepted. The receiver could not maintain control of the ball. Ira Tullis almost oh. with the pick, could not control the ball as he went out of bounds. Lucky break for Round Valley. That could have been disastrous. Yeah, he he had about two more yards of sideline. He would have hauled it in, but oh. just was still un, not still bobbling off the hands as he went out of bounds. There could not bring it down. That Iris Ira had plenty of room on the sideline. He could yeah, have made. That was a little that. underthrown, I thought, and that that gave uh, Tullis the opportunity to jump that route. Third and thirteen. Young back in shotgun. He's got Cade Hogel immediately to his left. There's the snap. He drops back to pass. He's got a strong pass rush. He evades it. He flips it out to the flat. There's a big pickup. Whoa, did you see that There's second a effort? <laughs> second Look effort. At this. Kyron Clark with second effort. Does not go down, maintains his feet and fights for another three yards, taking it inside St. John's is 10. They're on the nine yard line going in. Oh, great footage by the loft. They are picking that up. Oh, that is fantastic. Again, this is all camera work done by local teens who are just trying to learn more and uh, you know, the loft giving them that opportunity. Young and shotgun. Hands it off to Mortensen. Mortensen with the touchdown. Untouched. Mortensen 
goes off of the outside corner untouched. Round Valley with the touchdown, setting up for the point after. Flores to kick. <laughs> the kick is up, and it is good. Round Valley now with a commanding 38-12 lead with 9.23 left in the fourth quarter. That might have been the nail in the coffin, folks. I don't know now that I don't know now that they can pull this off. Definitely some excitement in the dome tonight is Round Valley finally finding their groove on offense after a couple of key and I cannot emphasize enough, key interceptions by Jovan Ortiz. Big shout out, R&M Photography, 425-330-3496. Get your fall photos done, get your senior portraits now, get them scheduled while the weather's still good. It is Arizona, it'll change in five minutes, so do not hesitate, get those senior portraits booked now. R&M Photography, 425-330-3496. Nine six. Flores kicking it deep. Dion Perry gets it at the seven, hands it off to who is that? Ira Tullis. Ira Tullis rumbles it out to the forty yard line. A little misdirection by St. John's, and they've got the ball on the 40 on their own 40-yard line with 9:13. Let's see what their offense can do to step up, maybe get another score for them. So St. John said, "Oh, no, you're good." Oh, go ahead. I was just going to shout out to some sponsors. Give them some love. Please do, because I've been running off at the mouth. That's ah, okay. If you need to uh, revive your throat, go hit up the pop shop south of the old high school gym. Uh, they have floats now. Those are a thing, and they are going to be open after the game. So and let them know you saw them on Let's Go Elks. Okay, so last play, we had Thomas and Shotgun. Flips it out across the middle to uh, to Slade Nevin. That's for a solid a, completion. Yeah, Good for a six, yeah, for about a five or six yard gain on that. And I think that's what St. John's needs to do. They need to get back to what got them the 12 points in the first place. Indeed. <clears throat> I'm not a big fan of getting greedy. <laughs> St. John's setting up in shotgun, two receivers right, two receivers left, one in the backfield. He airs it out again to Heap. Heap gets hit in traffic, bringing it down to the Round Valley 45-yard line, tackled inbounds. Clock is at 8.21. Indeed. Casey Mortensen with the tackle. I can't stop thinking about the pop shot. Oh, you know what? What, what, what could you go for right now? Uh, that's what she said really oh, would be nice right now. I'm not going to lie. That is one of my favorites as well. I will pay cash if somebody goes and gets me one. Oh, <laughs> my son is all about the lumberjack. You know, I've never tried that. How is that? Oh, he loves it. I mean, he's not complaining. He's also eight, but. Thomas and Shotgun hands off to Tullus. Tullus hits traffic, maybe gains two. Yeah, I would love me some pop shop right now. I was trying to hit Wes up for water, but his cooler's empty. Like, oh, oh no. no. I 
know. I'm trying to. I'm just trying to make it through the rest of the game. The voice is getting a little scratchy. Well, my allergies have been terrible here lately. You know, normally we hit monsoon season, the allergies subside. This year, nope, it's been allergies ever since May. I was about to say, what monsoon season? Thomas back in shotgun, airs it out across the middle, finds his target in Nevin. Nevin takes it down to the 20 yard line. Round Valley kind of playing soft right now on the pass defense. Let's see if they tighten it up now that St. John's is down to 20. Yeah, are we playing, it looks like a cover three and just giving them a lot of room, especially across the middle of the field. They're definitely playing in zone and they're giving up that middle. So we'll see what happens now. Maybe they'll go back to man to man. Three receivers right, one receiver left, one in the backfield. Thomas is in shotgun. He's looking, he's looking off to the right. He airs it up to the corner and the pass play oh. is broken up. Over the fence and into Round the Round Valley room. player goes over the barricade. Who, I think that's Riley Hamblin. Went over the barricade, might have, might have uh, gotten a little bit of an owie on that, but. I believe that's a breach in uh, quarantine etiquette to go over that fence. Yeah, it looks like the weight room's off limits for 14 days now. Oh, man. So we've got uh, Round Valley definitely beefing up their pass coverage. St. John's coming out, one receiver left, three receivers right, one in the backfield with Thomas. Thomas and shotgun. It's back. He sets up the pass. He's looking right. Nevin getting a lot of action tonight across the middle as he gets hit and covered up on the, I'm going to say 14 yard line is going to be the spot. They're really working that middle. Hey, shout out to Trapper Cavey turning 57 watching on the stream. Big shout out to you, buddy. Thanks for watching. Thomas, he's got two receivers right, one receiver left, empty backfield. He's in shotgun. Might have been a little bit of movement. That one's going to get blown dead. Back him up five, and let's go to work. Uh, I've been looking, and they haven't posted any official scores as of yet for many other games. What have we What have we got for – what was it? The game was, what, Snowflake against – ALA Gilbert, was that the? I just had it. So, what is interesting to us? So, Sholo's playing Gilbert, Christian, Blue Ridge and Payson, Thatcher and Pima, Safford and Wilcox, Snowflake, ALA Gilbert, Thomas and Shotgun. Three left, one right. They're fighting for the corner. Did he stay in bounds on that? No, he nope. did not. Tough a, break. A pass to the corner of the end zone to Deion Perry by Thomas. And uh, that connection just did not make. Came close, came very close, but just did not make. Dion just did not have long enough reach to haul that in. So now we got fourth and nine on the St. John's 19 yard line, or Round Valley 19 yard line. St. John's got fourth and nine going in. Looks like they're gonna have trips left, one receiver right. Ira Tullis in the backfield next to Thomas. Thomas and shotgun. And we have a whistle. Oh, Morgan's gonna call timeout. He wants to talk about this for a minute. Indeed. And we don't want to forget one of our special sponsors of the stream, uh, a fellow by the name of Daniel R. Muth, professional land surveyor. Uh, apparently, if you need your land surveyed, he's a good guy to go to. Never personally heard of him before, but <laughs> hey, he's kind enough to sponsor the stream, so maybe check him out, give him some love. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, you know what? 
I can't speak for all the sponsors, but I tell you what. When this idea finally came up yeah. and we finally put feet to it, I was more than happy to get in on the ground floor because what a great way to bring Round Valley Athletics to people <laughs> who ordinarily wouldn't get to enjoy it. Indeed, and we can't thank you enough. Always been there helping us out, helping us grow it. Thank you, Dan. One is always glad to be of service. Thank you, Ethan. Really, thank you. Thank Wes, Stephen, The Loft. I mean, you guys you guys really are the backbone to this whole operation. Thomas in shotgun. He's looking for a receiver. He's got pressure, runs into traffic, and gets buried three yards behind the line to scrimmage. And Round Valley gets the ball on the 23, maybe 24-yard line. I mean, he had a man wide open in the corner of the end zone, too. Oh. That's just. When you're lying. I'm sorry. When the offensive line fails you, yeah, that I mean, is a heartbreaker. Yeah. That is too bad. So we're literally in that portion of the game where Round Valley doesn't need to get in a hurry. They pick up two first downs, and they could literally end the game on this possession. And the Round Valley faithful still hanging in. Nobody wants to leave yet. Coming with the blitz. KC Mortensen fighting for a couple yards. Let's see where they spot it. Oh, I'll eat up some clock, but you're not going to get any closer to a first down. Oh, we have a red skin down. Patterson is shaking up a little bit. He's having a hard time getting up. Oh, he just popped up there. Uh, he's, he's, he's limping. Ginger, but. He's limping and coming off. Looks like an ankle, maybe. Yeah. It's a good place to get stepped on, unfortunately. Bottom of the pile like that. <laughs> it's happened once or twice, that's for sure. Well, thank you for watching, Mr. Jerry Benfield. Benefield, watching from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tulsa, Oklahoma, I've driven through there. As have I. I think I've actually stayed the night in Tulsa, Oklahoma once. Seems like a nice town. So the World Bank gets a crease on the outside. We might have, it's coming back on an illegal block, but he fights all the way down to the St. John's 45 yard line. Uh, yeah, they're at the last. We're gonna have a block below the waist back on Round Valley's 26. Mm, I thought it was the, uh, It well, it's, he, he got on the, uh, it's either a hold or a block below the waist. I saw the kid go down, so we'll see. What it, oh, it's a hold, Round Valley. Yeah, oh, there you go. Oh, looks like we have two penalties. So we got a block in the back and and holding. Interessante. Oh. No, not that number. Don't give us that number. Oh, my goodness. Now the love pouring out. We've got Randy Herrera watching from Alaska. My goodness. Star Nicholas, join us from Perry, Utah. Well, I think Alaska definitely wins the long distance award now. Unless we can pick up somebody from Hawaii or maybe Europe. Yeah. I doubt our reach is quite that far, but you never know. We, hey, we're on the World Wide Web, baby. Anything's possible. Yes. Dolores Somebody. Tanner McRae from Mississippi. Thank you for joining us. Owen Young and shotgun after the penalty. Second and 15. Here's it out across the middle. Oh, Trayson Merrill with the big catch. Brings it down to the 32-yard line. Almost enough for the first down, not quite. Just shy of the first down marker, Trayson Merrill with the up in the air, circus wheel catch. St. John's defender there, but unable to break up the pass play. Yeah, after a catch like that, he may want to visit White Mountain Chiropractic. Even the slightest adjustment can make a huge difference. Visit them at, at Back to Whole Body Health on Facebook. 
from shotgun. Young hands off to Mortensen. Mortensen finds a hole and fights his way across the 35 yard line for a Round Valley first down, fighting all the way up to the 36. Clock stops at 3.56 as we reset the chains and the down marker. Clock starts at the ready for play. We're counting down from 3.50. Round Valley's in their huddle. I'm sure they're not gonna be in a big hurry. They're gonna use every bit of this clock that they can. Indeed. Ben Coombs, I see that love from Wisconsin. Owen Young and shotgun, Seth Wiltbank immediately to his left. We got trips right, single receiver left. We got Kyron Clark goes in motion. Seth going to the right side and getting all uh, kinds of red and white traffic. Indeed. We got Patterson. We got Bushman. We've got uh, Gage Tricky. <laughs> We've got most of the interior line for St. John's in on that stop. So Seth Wilbank comes out, Cade Mortensen goes back in. Owen from shotgun, he's got Mortensen on his right. Two receivers left, one receiver right. Oh, he got the pitch there we go, off. we got the pitch did. off. Mortensen gets out across the 50. Well, there's your second first down. Man, there is the second first down, 234 on the clock. Bless me. Do we have a number nine? Who's, who's number nine? Nine. We got number nine reporting in. I don't know who that is. Mortensen comes out, nine comes in. Riley Hamlin split out wide on the far side. Trips on the other side. Owen under center. Owen drops back. Hands off to the mystery player. Oh, that's number eight, Hogel. Hogel breaks across the 40 and rumbles down to the 37 yard line where the clock has stopped for the first down. We're down to 221 in the fourth. 38-12, Round Valley over St. John's. That was a really cool moment I just saw. After tackling Hogel, number 40 from St. John's, Afton Cox was super pumped, helped him up, giving him a few pats on the chest, pumping him up, just enjoying the game still. Looks like Gage Heap was number three, shaking up on the play a little bit. And number nine, James Thomas coming in for him. Owen oh, from shotgun. Hands off to Kate Hogel again. He breaks across the 30, turns up field, gets pushed out of bounds at about the 27, 28 yard line is where they're gonna spot it. So it looks like we're gonna have second and about one, maybe two. Oh, and this fourth quarter is running down quickly. Big shout out to Molly Butler Lodge for sponsoring this fourth quarter. Ooh. We've got Owen Young and shotgun, one receiver to the right, which is Riley Hamblin. Oh, we've got four set up on the on the left. One one back in the backfield next to Young. Young receives a snap. Hands off. No, it's a keeper. It's a keeper. Young probably picked up a yard, maybe two. I don't know if it's enough for the first down, but he definitely fought for whatever he got. Let's see where they spot it. All right, at this point, I'm thinking we nominate Owen Young for the offensive player of the game. Because if you want to look here at our stat sheet, we got 242 total yards passing on 13 out of 18. I don't think that's a nomination. I think we just give it to him. I, that's what I say. If you do that, we definitely got to give defensive player to Jovan Ortiz. Oh, for sure. With those two drive-killing interceptions in the third. Owen Young keeps it, takes it across to the 34. No, I'm sorry, the 26. 26, that should do it. That's first down round, Valley. So now all they got to do is kneel on it twice, and this thing's over. Yeah, 
I, Owen Young, offensive player of the game, definitely. And then you've got to give Jovan, Jovan Ortiz, defensive player of the game, with those two interceptions. Uh, I don't know how you don't give him that. I mean, he really just stopped things from really getting started in that th third quarter. That they should were driving do it. towards the end zone twice and to take them both away. Neil Young, Neil Young, <laughs> Owen Young, <laughs> Neils, Neils with 22 seconds left. That's it. They don't have to snap it again. We're counting down from 10. Ladies and gentlemen, Round Valley 38, St. John's 12, 3, 2, 1. The first game of 2020 is over with, ladies and gentlemen. Stay safe. Uh, we'll be back in just a minute with some on the field chat. Wes is going to head down there and see if he can pick up a couple interviews. Uh, right now. Yeah, here's some more stats. Uh, I saw someone else looking for the Owen Young stats. That's 242 total passing yards on uh, 13 out of 18 attempts. Yeah, I don't know. Let me see if I can get Steven on the headset here. Since he's our so now man. that So now that we have COVID protocol, they won't let the students on the field. So what they're doing now is they're putting the, the players down in front of the student section singing the fight song with the students. Uh, trying to keep everybody off the field for the protocol. So that's what we're listening to now. Rivalry week is now over. Sorry, Stephen, you are now, you are now hot. All right. Hey, rivalry week, three wins for Round Valley, one for St. John's this Will you week. Turn up his audio just a little bit. Three wins for St. Uh, Round Valley, one for St. John's this week. Big one tonight. You know, just some numbers. Offensively, am I up? There you go. Offensively tonight, Owen Young, 13 for 18, 242 yards, three touchdown passes. You know, that's pretty nice. Uh, Seth Wiltbank had 117 yards rushing tonight, um, 107 of those in the first half when we really needed it. Uh, eight, yard, an hour, eight yards to carry average. You know, some nice things that, that we saw. Jovan Ortiz, second half. St. John's going in for potential game winner. Picks it off at the five-yard line. You know, shuts that down. Yep. Next drive, same thing going on. Then getting down, he picks off the 30, almost takes it back for six. Those are the things I saw, you know, from the numbers side. Big plays that turned the game. Oh, yeah, those two those two drive killers that Jovan, I've been chirping about them ever since the third quarter ended. I. What a backbreaker for St. John's. Oh. Not just once, but twice. Yes. Two drives that potentially St. John's could have tied the game with or gone ahead. Well, they, they were going in. I mean, that first one, I just think this could be, it was uh, bringing back shadows of last year's op game opener against Sholo where we got out to the early lead and then they came back and turned the momentum early in the second half yep. and we didn't recover. That's what was happening there. And he picked that off and shut that down, and we marched it down the rest of the way and, and scored the touchdown. And the game turned on that that exchange of drives right there. Yeah, it did. And and I got to give a I, hats off to Owen Young for keeping the composure of the offense. Yes, very much so. There were several opportunities where they could have just dropped their head and not done anything, and they didn't. Uh, so hats off to him for showing that leadership on the field. Hey, that game was a good time. So, yeah, hats off to Owen Young because I tell you what, keeping that composure is a big part in posting up 38 points. Yeah, I mean, even on the, the few throws that Those didn't come out right to were the over live stream. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> What was that, Stephen? <laughs> so too much going on. I have to do three things up here right now. But those of you listening to the stream here in town, the Pop Shop is open. One of our sponsors. So go get your caffeine fix, your sweet fix. You know you what? If somebody wants adrenaline. to show me some love and grab me a Pop Shop, I would gladly take it at this point. Yeah. My throat is just raw right now. 
Yep. Yeah. Mrs. Muth, if you're listening, <laughs> that's a hint. Or one of the junior Muths, if you guys are listening, the old man could use a use something to cold to drink. Just just a thought. I heard the man enjoys a that's what she said. I do enjoy that's what she said. That one what's the other one that's the um uh Oh, this is my favorite game. Come on. Oh, uh, I, t- I can't even tell you what. It's like mellow yellow and. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I, I forgot Trophy the wife? name. Trophy wife? My Trophy name, wife, yes. Yes, yes. that's one yes. I used to like. <laughs> yes. But I've added a custom one. That I get a custom drink there that, that isn't on their normal menu, and it's so good. It's mellow yellow with grapefruit and pineapple and raspberry. Oh, Ooh. you know, that don't sound that bad. Delightful. That that sour, that, that tartness of the, the grapefruit. Uh, of grapefruit counters, the sweet, it is really, really good. Well, you know, my old standbys, my old standby is vanilla Coke. I am a sucker for vanilla Coke. Yeah. Do you remember the old Dairy Cream down there in Springerville? I do. They yeah. made the best. I even remember They it. made the best Coke. Oh, my goodness. Oh, vanilla. Well, the, I think. The best, the best vanilla Coke. In the world, when that Dick and when Dick and Myrna Udall were running that, I I think she was getting her vanilla from Mexico. <laughs> I I do because it you know everybody loves to cook with it. It's got a deeper, richer flavor. Yep. And I and I think that's what made all the difference. I yes that in fact that's Dairy Cream is what got me hooked on vanilla Coke in the first place. <laughs> well, yep. that in the in the soda fountain in the old drugstore oh yeah when i was little across like, the street yep. yes yeah. when i when i was very little dan we're showing our age i know it <laughs> yeah most people don't even know that that was the drugstore yeah where, where, the, where the street is now yep. the park mm-hmm. the old becker's drugstore yep great game tonight guys uh i got a little bit worried there at the end of the first half early second half the elks took control and kept it rolling yeah, I mean, St. John's came out. They had momentum. They were driving. Those two interceptions really just kind of. Yeah, that double pass at the end of the first oh, half, yeah. that really swung the momentum. I mean, we, and it was a nice play because he had to evade tacklers. Yes. Well, how many times How many times do you see the flea flicker in high school football? Yeah, not very often. <laughs> well, we, just... tried, we ran against Phoenix Tristan last year and got called for illegal forward pass, remember? Yeah. On the double pass. Hey, and you know, we we forget. You know what? Before we get too wrapped up in all of this, I just want to go out the loft and the and the film work that the loft did tonight. Holy cow! If you guys, if I I can't wait to go back and watch the live stream in replay on YouTube because I'm watching it live. I can't watch the monitor. I. Only on certain replays did I actually get to see some of the goal line stands that the loft picked up for us. But on those, what that was excellent. Oh, I yeah. hope I hope we can do that every single home game. There were some professional level uh, shots at the goal line and some of those uh, other plays. I mean, unbelievable views that we got. Um, hey, Steven, you ready for an interview? I'm waiting for... All right, Looks we're like going to go ahead and pass it down to Wesley down there on the field for some interview action. Take it away, Wes. All right, guys, we're joined by the Let's Go Elks offense and the defense and players of the game so far. Going into halftime, guys, tell me what was the feel with what it was. That last minute um, score by St. John's brought it almost even again. What was halftime like when you guys got in there? It was just it changed the momentum. We were all just trying to get to win and keep going on forward and just keep going and keep going. We're just trying to make a, the game change and everything, just keep the momentum going. We'll come back to that in just a sec. Oh, and offensively, was there any changes? Were you guys thinking about doing things a little bit differently in the second half? Um, no. Obviously, we have some mistakes early, but just focused on the defense, just gave, took what the defense gave us, and then we were able to make some plays that way. So you talk about momentum, and that was the biggest thing going into the second half. St. John's gets the ball. They start making that drive, and you're able to pick that off and get 15 yards out of it. How did that feel on the field at that time? Because we were feeling it up there, and we were saying, is this the moment the game takes a turn? Yeah, I was just we were just trying to change the momentum. When we got that, we just changed the whole game, and we just started 
go, keep going on and everything, just keep going. And you, and you couldn't just do it one time. You decided to do it again. You pick again for 67 yards the second time, again in another really big play when it really continued to turn the game around and push Round Valley to that victory. And so what do you attribute that to? I don't know, man. Just keep going. I don't know. Just keep it, keep it going. Just getting it done that way. So this man with two picks and also two touchdowns on the night. Congratulations, sir. Anything you got to say as we go into the week with Safford, as we go to Safford? What are your thoughts? Just, just another game. Just another game. Just another day. It's a man of few words, but he's just getting it done that way. Joanne, thank you so much. Owen, how about you? Taking a little bit of the different reins now on the offensive side. Great passing. It was great to see that. How did it feel for you open things up? Well, it felt good just to finally get with the offense and not make as many mistakes. Just let's start getting on our groove. No one can really stop us. When do you feel like that happened? When do you feel like you guys turned the corner and the machine kind of turned on? Definitely uh, going into the second quarter and then coming out at halftime because we let it slip away a little bit towards halftime. But. With your passes, um, has that just been practice? Are your receivers just really dialed in with what you're doing? What do you attribute how, how well you guys really seem connected? You were 13 for 18 for 242 passing yards with two offensive touchdown passes. Well, we got a great receiving core this year. Most of these guys have been here before. They've been doing it for a couple of years. So it just makes my job easy. Do you anticipate staying in the air as much as we were this year, or is it a game-by-game -game thing? Are you guys going to stay fluid? Uh, yeah, I think we'll be passing a lot more this year with the weapons we've got. Very cool. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Owen Young, your offensive player of the game. Javon Ortiz, your defensive player of the game. Gentlemen, congratulations. All right, we'll go back up to you guys to wrap things up. All right, thank you guys for that. For that. What are your feelings, uh, gentlemen, on the Safford game going forward? Any thoughts? Well, Safford's going to be big. It's going to be physical. Brown Valley's going to have to use their speed and execute to get past them. Yeah. I, you know, I mean, Safford... Safford's big. They're going to come at you with hard mouth football. Yep. Round Valley's going to have to step up, use their speed. I think if we attack with speed, yeah, sure. uh, the altitude will definitely be an advantage in Safford. Yep. Uh, it'll be, you know, the night uh, might be a little warm for us. But we're lucky it's later in the year and early fall. It's usually beautiful down there. I, I anticipate great football weather down there. Um, difference the atmosphere you know there's going to be 300 fans there tops you know probably uh unless they loosen up their restrictions before then well so, what kind of restrictions are they going to put on round valley fans they, they were talking yesterday five uh we're trying to figure out i think he's starting to break it down okay they were talking five fans per player Five fans per player. That's what I was hearing yesterday in a, our staff meeting. They were talking something like that. So not a lot of numbers down there. But that's not bad. I mean, for an away game for us, that's 200 fans. You know, and that's so not a bad crowd. Does that mean the Hamblins have to have a lottery to see who gets to go to the game? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to draw straws, yeah. see who gets to go and who gets to stay. Well, they don't, these guys, well, other than Riley, but the – core Hamblin group that travels a lot like Steve and those guys they don't have anybody on the team they're gonna have to bribe somebody to get a ticket because they go to a lot of the away games they want a ticket they're gonna have to bribe a player to get one of their fan tickets to ah, get, see, to that, that's a good point that's you know? a good point I hadn't thought of that yeah indeed I've got some score updates oh do we finally mountain. so we've got Sholo going down to the Gilbert Christian Knights, thirty to twenty-one. Ooh, that's that's. We play both those teams this year. We play. We go to. I believe we play Gilbert. Well, I know we play them. I can't remember if they come up here. Or we go down there. But uh, Sholo goes down to Gilbert Christian. They yes. got they got a transfer this year from somewhere over in Phoenix um, with the COVID stuff. I think they got somebody. They got a COVID a couple of COVID transfers that could have. They're big time players. Uh, no, say it isn't so. Hey, we can't say much. We got a COVID transfer this year out of Colorado. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, who happens to be related to the coaching staff? I mean, come on. Yeah, but but you, 
no, it's that's the that's a real thing this year. But because of COVID, the transfer rules are a little bit more relaxed. If they're coming from schools that got school that got where there where where their uh, programs were shut down or delayed, yeah. they were allowed to transfer without a delay. And so, you know, it's happened all over the country. The, the states and schools that are open for business are getting those those bodies this year. Yeah. yeah, I have to apologize to everybody. So they put me in front of the soundboard, and I don't know what to turn, and I was trying to turn the mic off, and I was turning everybody else <laughs> up and off. <laughs> and So, you know, I don't know what you heard. I don't know how much of what, of what Stephen said you heard or not. but That's what you have me here <laughs> for, to, to fix it. Wow. All right, All right, so next update, we've got Thatcher over Pima, 26 to nothing. Yeah, that's not a... That's not a shocker. Uh, Snowflake edges out one with uh, American Leadership Academy Gilbert, 22 to 20. And looks like it's all I got so far. You don't have to unplug it yet if you still got it. I'd like to give a big shout out to our post game sponsor, Ponderosa Realty. Uh, awesome people. Um, they. Uh, they say there's going to be new homes hitting the market the first of this next week. Uh, apparently, you know, new homes in this area are hard to find right now, so they're pretty excited to be able to offer more listings. Um, I, I know everyone who works there, and they're all awesome people. So if you're looking to get in the realty game, you know, it's a good, pe good people to get involved with. Richard Ayers actually helped us buy and sell uh, a home as well and so yeah go see the fine folks over there they've got a good crew um, recently um, for a long time century 21 now they're doing their own thing and that's to help keep things a little more local help keep things dialed in that way and so go see the fine folks at white mountain ponderosa realty you'll be be happy 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 that you did indeed uh, i do want to shout out white mountain off-road i didn't get a chance to do it during the stream um you know, book now to get your fall getaway. Start planning adventures for 2021. They uh, rent out ATVs, UTVs. They got machines with up to six seats. It's a great way to see the White Mountains. Go so ahead and give so them a shot. They've got a wide fleet. They've got a number of UTVs. Go on their website. You can already start booking your 2021 adventures. Go see the marbles at White Mountain Off-Road. Some good people with some fun stuff to go play with. And they rent the trailers and helmets as well. I and believe. they'll deliver for you as well if you say, I want you to take it to X place on the mountain. This is where we're camping. They'll set up delivery, yep. and they'll get it to you for the day. And you just it's all its all a package deal if you need it or want it. So White Mountain Off-Road, it's getting it done that way. You know what? While, yes, we're, while we're sitting here talking, I just got reminded, Mr. Thomas. The well, quarterback? The quarterback. Okay. For St. John's, you know, he had a good, he had a heck of a game. I have to tip my hat to him for the way he left it all on the field tonight. I, I didn't see him fall apart. He kept his composure. He was still he trying did. to make good plays. It just, it just wasn't, just wasn't the whole deal. They just couldn't make it dial in the entire way. But you're, it, you're right. Uh, the offensive line for St. John's as well. He had the time to pass. Almost every time. Round Valley had some times where they were able to bake some pressure, but really St. John's is O-line. A lot of love there. You know, as they get deeper in the season, they are definitely a 2A contender. Absolutely. They will be – they'll be – with this team, they will be at state. That's my prediction. St. John's will be in the 2A state game. It would be exciting to see. I, I don't see this team failing in the two in the 2A. I don't. Coach Morgan as well, I don't know if you guys talked about this already, one game away from the Arizona State win record, correct? Yes. Wasn't able to get it done tonight. We'll see if he gets it done against Pima at home. What a sweet way to do it at home, though, right, if they're able to get the win against Pima. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. All right, and joining us from the Legacy Teen Loft in St. John's, we have Dakota Albertson. How are you doing, Dakota? It's going to be like Santa Claus here. You want to sneak in? There we go, Dan. What do you want for Christmas, little boy? <laughs> All right, Dakota, so tell us a little bit about the loft, about the Teen Legacy Center in St. John's. Is your mic on? Sorry. 
Hold up. There, there we go. go. All right, now you can talky talky. So the loft is kind of like a uh, place for the high schoolers, which is um, from freshman to sophomore, I believe. And you have to have like this card to go in there, but like it, they have Xboxes, pool tables, and stuff like that. They have a rock climbing wall, so you can study there too. What what's your favorite thing out of all the stuff they have at the loft? The pool table. The pool tables. That's what I was talking to Judge Latham, and he says they're they're getting them refinished. They have to keep doing it because kids just keep playing and playing and playing them. And so, um, one of the biggest things he's seen kids playing all the time are the pool tables. Um, so but the loft with Legacy Teen Productions, you guys are able to do video productions. We appreciate you guys collaborating with us a number of times. You guys were just at the Apache County Fair with us. So what is it about video production that intrigues you? Being able to just sit there, watch a game, and video it, really. Right on. Is there anything you want to do specifically? Do you want to get behind the board? Do you want to find yourself producing? What really interests you when it comes to video production? I just want to, like, produce it and video. Right on. Well, we hope to have you back then. We'd love to have you on another live stream with us. We'll get you behind the board. We'll get you set up with Ethan or somebody else as we work different parts of the stream. So thanks, Dakota, for joining mm -hmm. us tonight. Yeah, no problem. Right on. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Whoa. All right, guys, so I think we're kind of putting a bow on the live stream. Ethan, play the game. If you had to say one, what, what was the moment? When was it? What was your favorite part? I, I think the, the honest-to-goodness tipping point was St. John's. They were coming out. They had the momentum. They were marching down the field. It was the interception, the first one. Javon Ortiz. Yes. I wrote it on my sheet, turning point, question mark. Exactly. And from that point on, I mean, and St. John's, to their credit, were rallying back. They were marching down the field a second time. And when it got intercepted near the goal line the Guess second who? time by Javon Ortiz, <laughs> it was just. And that one's for like 60 yards. He yes. turns that one around and gets way down the field. So two times just completely puts the stop on the momentum train and turns it around. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. It was at that point that we we're like, well, okay, defensive player of the game, you know, right there. Indeed. And it really uh, tilted the scales in our battle of the insurance agents for our touchdown. Absolutely, right? <laughs> I was enjoying that. I was, you know, in the first quarter, I was wondering if Jaron was even going to get on the board. And then they had those two quick scores right before we went into half. And good times right on. yeah so a big thanks to to farmers insurance in round valley agent troy merrill um, takes care of a lot of people takes care of a lot of things takes care of things on the field as well one of the coaches for round valley always working in the community with the kids great guy and then jaron burnham newer agent serving the st john's and conjo communities so if you have needs for insurance please make sure you go touch base with him go check out the services they have to offer they're right downtown right by the courthouse right there on i think cleveland is the name of the main yeah. street or it is main street i apologize but right there downtown by the the three-way situation where the pizza place is and, and yes. circle k so and i'm pretty sure there's a friendly rivalry there too because uh, jaron used to work for Troy right in on. the Round Valley office. The Apprentice is now. Exactly. Uh -huh. so we'll see what happens. We'll indeed. see what happens there. Uh, well, guys, I think that's going to wrap things up for us here in the Dome. Round Valley starting things off in a big way. Um, I honestly think it could have gone either way at halftime. Really big, really big. It could have gone either, either way. Um, so amazing to see the Elks push through, find their momentum. Again, I ask Jovan, you know, what was that moment? Or I ask you, Owen, when did the machine turn on? You know, when yeah. did you guys finally get in the group? Because we saw, um, Stephen and I were talking, we saw the moment when Kevin Flores got comfortable. There he was go. the first kick, oh, no, barely over the top, right? And then you could just see him get more comfortable, more confident, right? Yeah. And so I'm excited to see what Kevin does as the, as the season progresses as well. And so as Round Valley gets more comfortable, as they get more dialed in, we'll see what – See what the I rest know, of I was works. nervous sitting here watching warm-ups, and those kicks were barely making it over the crossbar. And so I think he just needed to settle down because the last few had plenty of distance. Well, when you're conditioned to kick it under the post, it's a completely <laughs> different thing to then be asked to kick it over the post, right? And so, guys, as we wrap things up in the Dome, we are doing everything that we can to be live for you in Safford. So be watching our socials for that. Our hope is to be able to bring you the action uh, live from the Safford uh, football field um, one last shout out that we want to give is to the unsung heroes our silent partners that join us that partner with us that are excited to be able to watch stuff remotely wherever they are but 
do not want us to say who they are. And so you guys know who you are, and we appreciate who you are because we get to do fun stuff like this, and we get to bring you the action. And so I hope you enjoyed our shenanigans tonight. Uh, really appreciate Ethan and Dan taking care of business that way. Um, I'm very selfish when it comes to this. I love I love this place. I this know. is my home. And Ethan, um, I'm sure, served you well. <laughs> I had the live stream up watching it almost as like an instant replay situation at the booth. And so I know he took care of you that way. But thank you for taking care of us, all of our sponsor family. Thank you for helping us, facilitating us to take things to the next level again. Our goal is to do it just a little bit better every yeah. time. Fix one thing we did wrong. And, and through that, we're able to actually not only get these loft kids experience, we're actually able to pay them to come out and help us out. That's right. We want to be able to teach them and then – who doesn't love a little bit of compensation? And so we're so happy that the Judge Latham um, has let us partner and collaborate with the Loft, so the Legacy Teen Center. We're really excited for things to come because the Lodge affords us the similar opportunities. And this exactly. was the first week that we were able to leverage some equipment that is from the Lodge that we were able to bring some Round Valley kids on board. So a huge thanks to Dasha Trone, to Jet Hamblin, to Cade Latham and Rustin McBride for running cameras for us this week during Rivalry Week. We had three live streams. And if it was just the four of us, that wouldn't have ever happened. It's exactly. because our crew became a crew of 15 people or so that we were able to do it. And so huge shout-outs to the Loft, as always, for them getting it done that way, helping us bring the action to you. And so from the Dome, as we wrap things up, man, the comments. I didn't get to see any of the comments. I know. It must have been hard. I kept getting texts, so I knew how much he wanted to be here doing what I do. But he's so good over there <sighs> doing what he does. I don't even know. So, guys, as we wrap things up, again, a huge thanks. We're going to sign off here at the Dome because we have a lot of cables to roll up. This is my favorite part of the night. And so, guys, signing off here. We'll catch you soon. Follow us on our socials. If your kids have that Twitch thing, you should ask them about it. Have them hit the subscribe button for us, the follow button on Twitch. Uh, we're trying to build our community that way as well. So, from the Dome, this has been Let's Go Elks. I'm Wesley McBride. I'm Ethan Holiday. we got Mr. Steven Pena. we got Mr. Dan Muth. You guys have an amazing night. Be safe. Make good choices.